Welcome to the show, Red Hill Racing Podcast in full effect. This will be episode number three. Um, ben Knight here again with your co-host, Dustin Lee. What's happening, Dustin? Going on, everybody. I'm Man, just hanging out. What a launch day yesterday, huh? We're, re- we're recording on Thursday night, so we've officially been live for a little over 24 hours, I guess 30 hours or something now. But man, Dustin, what a what a day. Man, it was really, really humbling to see the positives. Like we had zero negatives, except the fact that I had a little bit of a microphone issue that I'm hoping is corrected now for this recording. Other than that, man, it was all positives. Everybody was sending good vibes and maybe input on what to record later. It was it was really good. Really good. Thank you. Thank you to everybody who's tuned in for the intro, the first episode, and you know, for listening to episode three. Cause without you guys, I mean, we wouldn't do it. <laughs> I mean, if we had one person listen to the podcast, we probably would have canceled episode three. So <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. No kidding. But in 24 hours, we had right at 300 downloads, which um shout out to my girl lauren thank you lauren for walking me through this process and helping me and dustin get going but lauren said that that is remarkable that some some clients you know take a month to get 100 downloads on episodes so so we're doing good but we're only doing good because of y'all yeah we definitely appreciate it and hope it just keeps growing and everybody enjoys it and we help them get through the day by listening to us ramble Yep. And we, like Dustin said, we appreciate the feedback. It's, it's needed. You know, we, we knew we were possibly having some issues, but everybody was letting us know about that. So as Dustin mentioned, he changed a few microphone settings and some Wi-Fi, you know, some Wi-Fi settings. So it, you know, yeah. let us know after you listen to episode three, was it better? Um, so just let us know. Yep. We got a couple, uh, we call these what housekeeping duties. So Dustin yeah. had a house. That's what we'll call, that's what we'll call not maybe necessarily mess ups because I don't know if it was a mess up, but just clarifications from past episodes or whatever. So we got some housekeeping. Yeah. Yeah. We got to do some sweeping. Sweep it up. We'll let them know yeah. what you wanted to clarify about diapers. Um. Yeah. The last episode, like literally we recorded it. And the next day, uh, Miss Gladys Loney or Looney, if I say your name incorrect, I'm sorry. She posted on the Man Cup group that she has spent some time in making a engine diaper that will go around the engine and allow uh, under exhaust exhaust system to go under it. So if you're still looking for something like that to race man cup, uh, she is on the man cup group and she has posted about it and you can order one from her. I think they're going to have some fitment uh, posting pictures or pictures posted or whatever of it. And that really made me happy because that's going to eliminate a big issue. So that's cool. I just wanted to make sure we cleared that up. Literally the next day, I sent a big screenshot <laughs> and it was like, bro, <laughs> but it's awesome. It was exactly what we needed. So hopefully that helps out a lot of racers. Yep. Yep. And like Dustin said, he just wanted to clarify, you know, if anybody listens to an old episode or whatever and thinks, well, man, you know, there's nothing for street bikes. So yep. just, uh, there's something, in, there's an option out there now. Uh, yes. Once again, I got to hit this and we're trying, we, we don't want to sound like the drunken sailor that I am, but you know, this is, this is, what is it? NS FW not safe for work. We might let it slip. We might curse a little bit. And we were told we cursed a few times on the last one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we won't, we won't repeat it, but we're trying, we're trying. We're not perfect. Yeah. We get excited. Yeah. We we're hoping that y'all can hear the excitement. We've been getting yeah. amped up. Well, we're we're so used to talking to each other all the time anyway, so we just kind of just get in the – you, for, yeah. you forget that everybody's listening. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so uh, back to the redneck hillbilly thing. We can't help it. Man. Yeah. We just – but we want to throw that out. You know, we don't want, you know, you to just be 30 minutes in and, you know, stuff happens. So this, this is your fair warning is what we're yep. saying. Yep. We sorry. <laughs> we sorry. We sorry. All right, marking that one off the list. Uh feedback. Like we said, keep the feedback coming. We pretty much already touched that. We appreciate it. Um Patron or pay a patron. We'll call it the Patron experience. Um yeah. <laughs> honestly, Dustin and I weren't exactly sure what we were doing with it just because we didn't really know how it functioned, but now we kind of have a better understanding of how it functions. So I just want to explain this to everybody. Obviously, right now, the podcast is free to listen to. We we hope and want to try and keep it that way. Um, 
there are there's just costs associated like obviously y'all can understand that but we want we we want to keep this going and everything so the getting to the point the patron thing is what we came up with you don't have to do it but if you like what you hear and you want to support it you know consider doing a dollar that's that's all we're saying just if we subscribe for a dollar if we if we have a show and we hit y'all on the feelings and you're all happy about it send us a dollar if you want to hear about chickens it's a dollar a month (laughs) but no like literally the patreon so and and here's what we're doing because we're working with some sponsors um we're getting sponsors literally every day right now um and what we're going to do is we're going to do drawings. It might get to weekly, but at least monthly drawings for prizes, gift certificates. It could be anything, but it's going to be good stuff that you guys. And yeah, just to just to clarify, this the sponsors that we get, everything they give us is going right to y'all. Every bit of it. Like, you know, there's going to be like there's there's nothing that's going to just like nourish us. So really when you do donate through Patreon, that's what helps us. Yeah. We're just trying to keep everything going. But as we mentioned, our, our thank you for being a patron, patron, whatever you want to call yeah. it. And yeah, um, we appreciate it. Is that we're, we're going to do giveaways that we're getting through sponsors. So like, you know, you're kind of keeping the wheels turning and then we're going to reward you from the sponsors we get. So that's kind of our goal. With and it. you got to be those special people that's, you know, subscribed and all that stuff to be yeah. eligible. So, and like we said, you know, if you don't, if you don't want to donate a dollar every month, that's cool. Like you're not, you're not hurting our feelings, but you, mm-hmm. you're not going to get the giveaways. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Cause there's some pretty sweet things I've got to talk about today with some people. So it's yeah, going to be pretty t- awesome. Tell them about uh, the two companies that uh, decide they were going to come on board with you today. Uh, Dustin. Today. Uh, can you talk about the, it yet? Yeah. I mean, we can go <laughs> at it. Um, I'm sure they would love it. Um, Eric at MTC is full on board. Um, we're going to have $500 of certificates. Uh, probably be like $25 a piece. To just give, you know, have drawings, just giveaways. random drawings. Yeah, giveaways for the, you know, the subscribers and stuff. And um, the next one's pretty huge, man. We're not really sure how we're gonna how we're gonna ta- tackle the deal yet. But um, Penske Racing Shocks, my man Dustin at Penske, he is giving us a whole shock. Like we're gonna have a whole shock to give away to you guys, and we're not sure exactly how we're gonna go about that. We might have to maybe do like an entry or something to help us fund this, or we might be able to just to give it away. It just depends on how many subscribers and Patreons we get, what we can do with the shop. So it's all so new, but everything's happening so fast that we're just <laughs> trying to figure out, you know, what is the, we want to do what's best for you guys and us to stay running. You know what I mean? So it should well, be cool. Awesome. I mean, very excited to have those two companies are very important to me. And there's some more that's very important to me that's in the making and yep. uh, probably know something maybe before the next show, we can bring them up, talk about it. And then at some point the sponsors will have maybe like a little piece in these podcasts that we can talk about their products or whatever, just that way they're getting what they need for what they do for us. Yeah, for sure. So definitely want to give um, a shout out to Penske and MTC. Dustin and I both, personally use these products on our bikes so you know we're just trying to reach out to the companies we we do business with you know hey, from a personal level it, too i got two things to say for mtc if you ain't sliding you ain't riding and for penske shocks if you spinning you ain't winning <laughs> there you go well look at them taglines we're gonna have you record the uh sponsorship the commercial commercial oh yeah. man i'm saying this i'm <laughs> saying this i can't wait for my lovely wife to be to hear this podcast because she's texting me tiktok videos right now like as if she doesn't know what i'm doing yeah i told uh, Tamara, i was like can you turn the tv down because we got a really nice surround sound system i'm like you know i just don't uh, want everybody to hear what you're doing <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna ask her like what were you doing Send, oh well I, I knew you would look at it later well don't send me messages now yeah hey what are you drinking um, tonight right now i'm on water man i don't want everybody whoa to know we, that swapped I'm an roles. <laughs> we swapped roles last fucking... oh. <laughs> the last How far recording we we're like 10 minutes we might even so, we might we might edit that one out yeah we might have to the last recording you you were drinking something and I was drinking water and this time I actually got me a little cup just a little small something something of some moonshine and then I have a really big glass of water. Hey, I just poured a poured it. Now I sound like I'm drinking. I just pulled it out of my desk drawer 
um i still have a little bit of this knob creek but it's not regular knob creek i just want to clarify this like i'm drinking 12 year old knob creek so i don't know i think it was like a nice. 70 you like all that you like all that special stuff that that real rough stuff real rough stuff no it's not rough though when it's like good bourbon like good bourbon good scotches i don't know it's, i'm gonna start I guess calling it, you bourbon being bourbon man that's probably that's bourbon better being. than Honestly, think about it. That's a lot better than half the nicknames I got. So. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, nobody ever, ever forget your real nickname. <sighs> yeah, we'll we'll deal with that. Um, Darnell. Darnell. No, no, man, Darnell. We're going to have Darnell stories on here. I just know it one day. Oh, I got some good ones. Uh, no, I don't remember any of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right, we got that out of the way. We explained the Patron experience. Um, I think that was it for that. Are we done podcasting? Yep. No, <laughs> um, no, we got, you got a little something to talk about, I think on this episode. So, yeah. So what I wanted to talk about, at least at first tonight is, is something that the way I'm going to kind of, I guess, you know, put it out there is that this is a lead into the school that Dustin and I are working on university of Wynn. We've mentioned it a few times, uh, a little bit more into that. That is going to be a membership only uh, program majority of it all online uh we've got a website that actually i got a final draft today or a rough final draft i haven't even shown dustin but it's coming along great the website's going to house everything when you sign up and become a member a monthly member you get full access to everything we have and we're going to add content weekly if not daily so, it's where champions are made yeah yeah i mean it really is uh I mean, there's just, this is for all levels too. It's, it's not just the beginners. It's also for some advanced racers too. I mean, here's the thing, Dustin, and I learn every time we go racing. I mean, if you're not learning, then, you know, what are you doing? So we learn every time and we have an extensive network of racers and just knowledge that we can feed off of. So I, we just want to bring it to you all. Um, but so the school basically is going to work like this. You sign up, you have access to written tutorials, audio tutorials, video tutorials, and these are going to walk you through the building blocks of what you need to be successful at motorcycle bracket racing. Um, yeah, it's not just the rider all the time. It's sometimes you got to have the right package. Yeah. And so this is, this isn't going to be a teach you how to ride class no. this is a teach you how to race class and there or, is a difference. or help you how to race or help you learn more about racing right there's a there's a lot more to it than just cut a lot and run your number yep you know what I mean? there's so. there's so many ways to it and it and it's gonna let you see how we've excelled over the years because when you join and when you start going through these lessons that we're going to have laid out for you you're going to realize like Oh, honestly, you the light bulb's trying to go off, and you're gonna be like, "Well, Ben's really not that good. He just has this giant tool bag." And that well, we got honest. we got some examples for that tonight. <laughs> but that but that is honestly it. That's what it comes down yeah. to. Like, there's there's all kinds of ways to win a bracket race, and there's all kinds of ways to lose it. And you know, generally speaking, Dust and I are just in a big tool bag. We're just getting the tool for the job for that and, round, and personally for that, race, for that day, whatever it is. Personally, for me, I don't really want this to sound like kind of bragging but i have became to where i get more excited when i help someone do something or help someone win so this is going to help me uh just have some more excitement um, i'm getting to the point in my career where i'm living through everybody else um, i enjoy racing still and i enjoy of course enjoy all the people and um, you know seeing my friends and all that but just the fact that i could possibly help contribute somebody maybe getting two or three wins in a year or their first win or just so or go to the finals their first time or you know who knows whenever weekend who knows what the possibility is and i want to be in winter circle photos this year and i don't with want other them people to, yeah and i want them to be students and that's yes. the goal. that is our goal yeah. dustin hit it perfectly yeah. uh the format like i said there's going to be all the tutorials there's going to be a forum that you, you know, once you're logged in, you have access to the form. That's where, you know, you're going to bring up a question that you need answered. And Dustin and I are going to answer it. And we're, we might even bring on, you know, like I said, we got a big group of experienced championship racers, you know, that we're friends. And we with. might so, have some substitute teachers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, call it that. We might have some guest instructors. Uh, We're going to do some live. Well, I guess not live. We're going to do some weekly 
um, probably Zoom meetings. That way we can all kind of get on a call, you know, yeah, uh, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter if it's 10 of, 10 of y'all or 25. Now I will say this, we, we are going to cap the uh, school at a hundred members to begin with just, just for the pure fact that we don't want to get overwhelmed and we want to make sure that you're getting a good experience because yeah, because we got regular jobs, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Word of today is job. J O B. Yes, we J-O-B. do have other we do have other uh jobs, but we're we're taking this seriously. This is not, oh yeah. This Just is like not, the podcast. We yeah. are taking this stuff seriously. So we want to make sure that everybody gets a good experience. So the long winded kind of well, I don't even know if it was long-winded. There could be a, so much more I could say, but the the short, I guess, explanation and a little bit more peek into the University of Wynn, the reason I wanted to bring that up is for tonight's first topic. And and that's, I'm going to basically walk everyone through and, you know, hopefully Dustin will chime in or remind A me really or, shaky gambler's race win. Yeah. So I, if you guys weren't, didn't hear, follow, I don't know. It probably didn't even know honestly because it was gamblers race but i i did end up going i think i won three gamblers gambler races in a row at xda last year and was i was still in for the fourth race the final race um we it, talked about it a little bit the last episode okay just, well it got just a little it, oh yeah yeah see we don't even know what we talked about because you're the champion yeah i'm the i'm the unofficial a definitely official champion yes yes sir so yeah so Mark. this was uh it was four race streak basically this was the second race. And so what I'm going to do is just kind of walk you through because I shouldn't have won that race. I mean, like on paper, I shouldn't have won. I wasn't racing good. So I'm just going to kind of. You reached in your tool bag there. though, sir. Oh. You reached in there and grabbed that 10 millimeter socket. That's right. And uh, so the goal of this is, and I'm not going to explain it all because then there'd be no reason for you to join the school either. You know, there's got to be a little bit untold, but I'm, I'm just going to kind of give you some insight on the why I did what I did. This that is a day. taste of what you can get yeah. at university of win. Yeah. So here, we're just going to get right into it. So from what I recall, it was a summer race. It was really hot. I mean, like really hot, like almost a hundred that day on Friday. Um, I don't, yeah, wish, I was, wish. I was, I was probably dying somewhere. Yeah, you're definitely dying. <laughs> I pro- I'm sure I did not test that day. Cause I just haven't been testing much lately when I, you know, anyways, neither here nor there. It was hot. Uh, I made the time run. I, I'm looking at the results on XDA uh, right now, so I, I really don't know what my time run was. It wasn't impressive. I can tell you that. I know it wasn't impressive. And what I'm talking about is the reaction time. Didn't have an impressive reaction time. So, you know, go into first round and let's see. There's no buybacks, right, in the gamblers? No. You there, Dustin? Yeah, there's no buybacks. Okay. All right. No. I just wanted to clarify. Okay. So, no buybacks. So, I mean, every round matters. So, I go into first round, you know, it's not like I was super confident. I didn't just hit the tree double O or anything. So I go in the first round. Uh, you know, I here's the thing. I evaluate all my opponents. Once I get paired up, and that's this is like I said, this is going back to the university win. This is part of what we were going to teach. When you get to a certain point, and this would be, you know, after you understand our basic building block foundations, which is, you know, the, the start. But anyways, you'll get to a point where you need to evaluate your opponent. And without sharing everything, you know, take a look over once you know who you're racing, once you're paired up with. It doesn't have to be long, but take a look over. They got a nitrous bottle on? Okay. Well, that means that they can probably go faster than they're dialing or at least have the option, right? So you just got to pay attention to little things. Is the rider 150 pounds or 400 pounds? Yep. There's a difference. Makes a difference. It's going to, it's going to depend on how fast they're coming on top end. I'm sure that's what you're getting at. Yes, sir. Yeah, they're going to launch slower um, or come harder at the top end or vice versa. I mean, it's just there's lots of things. And honestly, the big thing that I'll harp on for this particular day, I was examining the opponent more so than even their bikes. Like you 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 want to do both for sure, because like I said, if there's a if there's a nitrous bottle on the bike, then you can assume that they at least have the option to go faster and maybe yeah, not. I have other things to say, but I don't want to say it because I don't want to like go into full detail. Yeah, we can't, but we're just trying to get you a taste. So like first round, I assess the opponent. I don't know. I don't want to say I wasn't worried, but I, I kind of had a game plan. So I went in and I, I knew I wasn't going to be crazy aggressive because it was first round. And I just want to get at least another lap in. And I felt confident that, you know, I guess with my tools that I could pull it off. So I'm 059 first round, uh, dial 892 showing i went 905 at 125 i was way off the gas my opponent was late um 
So that, you know, that helped make my job easy. So I'm 059. He said, don't really recall the time run, but it wasn't any better than that. Coming around two. So in my mind, I'm thinking like, all right, I was 059. I don't know. Well, let's call me 067 for the time run. So at this point, I'm like, man, I'm I'm struggling. And I hope this doesn't come across wrong either. That like, if if like that's good reaction times for you, then like don't take what I'm saying as being offensive or brat. We have standards for ourselves. When we set goals is really yes. what it comes down to. So like that is not my goal is not to be 60. That's just no. I'm just telling y'all. So yeah. Trip zip ever hit what we want to be. <laughs> yeah. So I go into <laughs> second round. Um, I'm trying to think. Another thing I'm I'm gonna do is like, you know, I don't want to call anybody out either per se on this example. Um, and if you look it up or figure it out, I don't I don't know. I'm not talking bad about it. Just keep it to yourself. We're not talking about people. We're talking about opponents. I'm just trying to give you all insight. You're just talking about your race, your evaluations and all that stuff of your race. Round two, uh, if I'm trying to remember the bike that the opponent was on, I'm thinking that I checked it out and that they did not have a nitrous bottle or anything. So in my head, I'm saying, okay, well, they can't just voluntarily go faster, right? Um, you either got to hold a bunch of numbers to go faster at this point. And that's the thing. If you don't know what holding numbers is, we'll teach you that, but I'm not going to get into it now. So my mind is this person can hold numbers and go faster, or they're just not capable of going faster than the dialing. So that, that lets me know what I can do. Right. So I leave, I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm not really any better than I probably was the last round on the tree. So I'm not ultra confident, but I was dialed. 891 or no so the dial and i was dialed 891 opponent 888 so we leave basically dead even i had a 059 light to their 078 so i'm actually depending on how it launched but i know right away that i was not in bad shape with them we go down through there um i put a wheel on them going 142 i go 896 on 891 they go 895 on 888 so basically i took um the starting line advantage which was 200s which is really good with the gap it was available to take yeah yeah i i tightened it up pretty good i'm not gonna do the math on the fly right now but i tightened really it up good at really that really good let's see that is a strong point for you yeah that's a very strong point for ben huh. is uh tightening up finish line margins and making them extra squishy well thank you buddy i appreciate that so i am looking at right now so basically i was six numbers off my dot six hundreds off my dial in he was seven um, and an eight. And so, yeah, I mean, I, it was pretty close, right? So moving on from round two, I'm going into round three now. I have tickets that are 067, 059, 059. At this point, I mean, like I said, it was hot. So in my mind, I knew that everybody else is dealing with the heat too. And I was kind of hoping that maybe other people were struggling, you know, hot Friday evening. Um and that maybe they were just being affected. What round is this? This is going into round three. And like I said, I've got a OC. Yeah, I'm a, I most likely round. lost this round. I lost right here probably at some point. Let me see. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I just, you, know, you, you made it in round three. Um, I made it. Man. Ooh, Woo. You were oh, – I don't want to rub salt in your room. but No, it's always man. some bullshit. Oh, damn it. Just, no, just it, wasn't, it wasn't bullshit, but you was 006 red. Oh, uh, that's just me trying to be – I'm trying to be that triple O every time, like I tell you. Always. Your opponent was 003 red. That was yeah. close. Yeah, they probably <laughs> seen mine. I don't know. I'd have to uh, – no. Uh, well, I don't know. It was 882 dial and 889. That's, I don't know. That's negligible. I don't think they could have seen it. They're, y'all were both just going for it. Yeah, we're racing. Round three, I am – Everybody, this is what I'm getting at. I'm not confident right now that I am hitting the tree. I'm I'm actually confident that I'm not going to hit the tree. Well, this particular round, I I got a little extra motivation. I was racing an opponent that I've raced many a times. Uh, he's really good at racing. And I don't know. I, th- I th- feel like he's just had my number maybe from what I recall in that round. Like he's had my number a couple of re- couple times recently. So in my head, uh, you know, I'm, I'm trying to create my own good vibes. I'm like, it's, it's my turn now. Like you got this. Cause I'm trying to basically at this point, I'm telling you this, that I'm talking myself through it because I'm trying to overcome the fact that I'm not hitting the tree good and it's hot. Yeah. You're I'm sucking it up pretty bad. At yeah. This point. Not terrible, but like not where we want to be. It's, it's not where we race at. And like I said, yeah. don't let anybody take offense. If, if you're really happy with 080 lights, I mean, 
way he likes can can get it done but obviously maybe. we're getting ready to talk about one yeah well, yeah all right well no so round three i think i'm pretty sure this was my best light of the day um but i knew i had to step up i couldn't slouch so i think i took an extra step in staging knowing that i might go red but i, I just couldn't i knew i couldn't get by this guy if i didn't have a better than 060 can't race scared man gotta get it that's right so long story short uh, i'm looking at this Based off of these times, uh, I dialed 894, he dialed 874. He broke out by one, and I am 500 behind at 131. So I know what I did. I went down there and I, I dumped him because I wasn't yeah. confident in my starting line. Now, yeah. that being said, we are both dead identical. 033, not bad lights. So those, I'll take yeah. a 30. So we're 033, me and my opponent. We're dead even off the starting line. But Here's where, you know, having an, an advanced toolbox to go in. I'm not confident that I was 033. You know, I being just, aware of your situation. Yeah, you got to be aware and you got to have an idea of what you think you just hit the tree at. So I, I did not think I was 030. I, I knew I'd probably taken a step in, so I could have been better 06, but I wasn't confident. So I went down there and I, I sprayed nitrous. And I sprayed nitrous to speed the race up. And my opponent... I guess thought probably thought that they had a better reaction time and were ahead and they sprayed nitrous by me. Um, and then I just turned them loose. I, I, when I started spraying, I knew that in my head I was breaking out. So I just, you know, where out. that button, that button was taking you somewhere that you couldn't go. That's right. So in my mind at that point, late in the race, I'd done sprayed probably, you know, a thousand foot on, um, and about 1,200 feet, getting ready to come up on the mile per hour cones, I, I just rolled out of the throttle and just sat up, and he broke out by 100th, and I was above after, you know, slowing down. So I made it through round three. Like I said, the key to that round was I did try to step up knowing I had a tougher opponent, and I used my tool bag, and I, I just raced the finish line. And I, I situation awareness pushed him out the back. That's what we call that. Pushing him out the back. Boo Brown always says there's two ends of a racetrack. Got better race them both. That's right. That's right. Sometimes just one, but both is good. So we're going into round four, man. We're going into round four. There's eight I'm of done us beat. Left. I'm on the trailer. Dustin's cheering me on. Um, yep. this point, I'm 067, 059, 059, 033. Well, I knew what happened on that 033. I'd went in a little bit. I wasn't confident. You, this is all confidence, guys. You got to have a lot of confidence to. In that yourself. was a guess. A guess. Sometimes yeah. you just got to take a risk in life and everything. So round four, we get paired up. You know, there's eight of us left. Um, I don't. I don't really know why, except for this great young racer I was paired up with. Um not taking anything away from him. I just, I, I guess in my head, I just had this feeling or in my gut, I don't know that he was going to try and really hit the tree hard on me. You had them vibes. You had vibes. Yeah. And I, I think part of it, like I said, was that he's a younger racer. And, I, and to me, he's going to want to prove and just yeah. really lay it down. Yeah. And so I'm going to be honest with y'all, you know, I wasn't feeling great on the tree. I didn't change anything. You know why? Because I just, I just felt like I was going to see a red light in the other lane. And this is not taking anything away from this opponent. Is They were just really trying to knock my head in. And they yeah. almost did. They were they were 005 red. But I, I, I remember explained. when you come back to the trailer, you said, I just had a feeling that they yep. were going to I do told that. you, right? And you're like, and we've no all way. been there. You said bullshit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm pretty sure you well, said bullshit. And then you told yeah. me how you was double O and lost. I, I was probably done taking my letters off like, Load my stuff up, my lip stuck out. Yeah. And so here's the big thing. I was 081. Uh, now I had my worst light of the race in the fourth round. I'm going on to the semifinals, and I just was 081. I mean, that's that's not gotta a good feeling. Them, it's not got to have feeling. them lucky rounds, man. Got to have lucky rounds. There's at least one in a race win, period. Um. So, you know, but like I said, this is all about making the best of the situation. That's, yeah. that's why I'm Awareness. about it. Yep. So I made – I had that – just call it a gut feeling, I guess. But I, I assessed the situation, and I'm, I was right. I call it lucky. I don't know what you call it. Semifinals, you know. So now I've been 067, 059, 059, 033, and then boom, 081. So I'm in no man's land at this point. I made it down to semis. In my mind, it's a win, you know, because I shouldn't have been here. In my mind, this is just me. Thank you, Lord. 
There's four of us. I don't know if I should say his name, but nah. I, had race, I had to race the squirrel. Oh, well, we can talk about squirrel. <laughs> and I raced squirrel, and I mean, I just – it was going to be a tough race. So, I I feel like on that round, I probably went back to round three, and I might have taken an extra step in. That being said, I still didn't feel confident because I didn't know where I was. That was a problem. I was not sure where I was. And you'll have that. You'll have that on some days' events. Once you just Some once days you, get, you can't boast a great, man. That's, that's just right. the way it is. But once you get used to knowing where you're at and on the tree, and then you have an idea after you leave the starting line, that's what we're talking about, really. And at mm-hmm. this day in particular, I had no clue where I was. I didn't know if I hit the tree good, you know, hit it bad, late, whatever. It, it didn't know. So this round, I was racing the squirrel. I mean, I knew he was – he squirrel's tough. Um, Plus, it's like almost a home track to him. He races there all the time. Yeah, yeah. So – I raced the squirrel. Um, he's dialed nine flat. I dial eight ninety three. So he leaves before me. Uh, it's not really enough of a difference for me to be looking at his light or anything. So I take off green. Um, we're both green and off. Well, we start running each other down, and I'm just looking over at squirrel. I seen his eyes. Like I thought he was staring right at me, and I started laughing in my helmet, y'all, because I was like, "What is the squirrel going to do?" And I, oh, I'm over here, and I'm, like, making these exaggerated moves with my hands, which I probably shouldn't have been, whatever. I was making this exaggerated move with my hand because I'm I could have swore Squirrel was looking me dead in the eyes, like could see his pupils through his clear <laughs> visor. <laughs> Giving you that and, stone cold look. And I'm, and I'm just – I'm taking my hand and just making this big exaggerated reach like I'm spraying nitrous, and wait, nothing happens. We're just still locked dead even. And I'm like, man, what is Squirrel going to do? And I'd like, this is starting to get more in depth. Like I said, you'll have to, you have to get to that point. All to this is just under nine it. seconds too. All this is under nine seconds. I'm, tra- I'm trying, basically I'm trying to make squirrel make a mistake and make my job easier. So I'm acting like I'm hitting nitrous thinking he's looking dead at me. He's not, that didn't do anything. Nothing changed. Now I'm debating whether to spray nitrous. Then we're getting close to the finish line. As Dustin say, you're trying to process all this. Luckily we're like, you know, he's dialed down flat on eight, nine, three. So we're, we're pretty even like I'm not I'm not evaluating a huge closing distance that's the that's the only plus and I'll be honest I didn't do anything normally I would have sprayed to get there or sprayed and dumped I didn't do anything you just chased it through because I was so confused and lost in trying to induce a mistake by squirrel that you messed yourself I didn't do anything and you know what I just got lucky I mean I did have an 044 light and he was late um he went dead on with a zero. So he did everything he could. He just had to have a little bit better light. And I just, I got a little lucky there. I guess, like I said, I probably rolled in a bit, but here's, here's the thing too. I come off the track. We were the first pair down this. We're down to four semifinals. I come off the track. We're at the ticket booth. I take my helmet off or whatever. I hear the announcer. So-and-so was just double O on the tree and takes the win. So I'm like, all right, whoever I'm racing in the final now just had a double O light. So I, you know, this, this goes back to, well, this is just, you need to pay attention. This is a pay attention tip. You want to pay attention to your opponent or have somebody do it for you. Have somebody do it for you if you can't, because you can't always do this. I just, I just got lucky and heard this on the loudspeaker, right? Yeah, sometimes you can look at results after they happen, but a lot of times you can't. You know? Yeah. But you know, if you, like if you got a buddy that's out early, you know, tell them, you know, yeah. give me some see feedback. How, see give how, me some whoever, feedback while you're yeah, whoever beers. wins that round, see, see how that goes down. You know what I mean? So, so I took that. I heard that on loudspeaker. We get back up there. Man, my boy, my buddy. I'm not gonna name him, but man, he was pumped. It was his birthday. He just wanted to win so bad it was his birthday. And I get that, man. I told him, I was like, I ain't I'm not even gonna be mad if you win because it's your birthday. I'm just gonna really good it. dude, great family, yeah. like. Good Some of our answer. personal friends, yeah, yeah, but like I said, aside from Squirrel, because we named him last show, like, yeah, we're, I don't want to get in everybody. Yeah, we're not labeling you know, nobody. We're just talking um, about Ben's experience here, and he's a great racer. But yep. he was just double O, and I knew he's excited. He's telling me about his birthday. Yeah, he's he's fired up. I got fired that up. feeling again, Dustin. I I just I said he's gonna go red. I think he's gonna go red, and he was he was dialed a lot faster. He was dialed like low eights, and I was eight ninety whatever. Um. Well, I guess a low eight twenties is what he was down. So he was going to, have to leave after me. So, man, I just I said man, he was just double O. I was like, I feel like he's either gonna 
try and hit it again that good and maybe push it too much. I just I just had that feeling. It's it's his birthday, he's in the finals, he wants to win on his birthday. I mean, I don't I would too. So I didn't change anything because I'm telling y'all, I was not confident in my starting line. Hey, sometimes prowess. you just gotta stick with what you know. You can't change if you like I mean, I mean, there's times that you can go for it, but in this situation, you know, you made the call that you're leaving first. So let me just stick with what I know and maybe something will happen or maybe I can pull it off. That was your awareness of the deal. Yeah. And and honestly, you just brought up a good point. I probably would approach that round differently had I been the faster bike. Yes, exactly. Because here's the thing. Um, if you leave all, early, if you're the first to leave and you're green, you're still playing. They got to do their thing behind you. That's Doesn't right. Mean? That's right. So as Dustin pointed out, which I hadn't really thought of, but I'm sure that was part of my process at the time. Had I been the faster bike, you know, I probably would have been prepared to really just roll it and hit. Cause at that point it is the final. So you're either winning or losing. You're going to either do it or not. I probably would have tried to just roll in and hit the tree hard. And if it went red for me, it went red, but everything I was, you're saying right now is exactly what he did. He yep. he went for it. Cause he was the faster bike and he had to take a shot at it. Yeah. And so long story short, I had my worst light of the day. I'm 083 and I won that race because my opponent was red. Um, and I, I don't know, like I said, just call it a gut feeling, whatever. But I mean, I, it's not really a gut feeling. It was a little bit, but it was more so just assessing the situation. So just to kind of encompass it, like I knew he'd just been double O on the tree and one. I knew he was excited because it was his birthday. Like that, that's just all things I'm taking into consideration. And I'll be honest, I told him after the race, like these exact things. So I don't, if he happens to listen or if anybody listens, figure out whatever, like we're not talking bad or anything. I'm just telling y'all how this race unfolded for me. Basically, a what, little insight. And, what we're we're talking about here is kind of just a little taste of what you can get at University of Win when we get that launched, and uh, processing races and situation. You know, being aware of what's going on and preparing yourself mentally because ninety percent of this is mental. Every yep, bit of it. I agree. So, as Dustin said, basically wrap this up. This is just an example. I would say that this example is utilizing. Um, tools and stuff that we're going to teach it would probably be i would call it like intermediate to more advanced per se i mean you have to have the basics you, you got to understand some of the beginning stuff like i mentioned you need this. to be a racer and already racing and just because like personally there's some really um, legendary people that has commented on our university of win post that is interested in the school and i'm talking people that i've watched I was a kid race and win, but that just shows that no matter how good you are, that you could always learn a little something, something new. And we're trying to target the people that already is racing. That's riding. That's just maybe wants to learn a little bit more about what we do, you know? Yeah. Well, and the reason I was saying that what I, my discussion for this example is probably a little bit more advanced is just, just to say that it won't make sense until you get to this point. And so to exactly. get to that point, but we're going to have it all. So we're going to have the foundation. I mean, I, and when I'm saying foundation, like we're going as far back as, you know, reading your time slip, like we're starting at basics, but because here's the thing, if, if you think, you know, the basics and you don't, then you just, you you're learn, losing, you learn nothing. Wrong. Yeah. Right. So, so we got to start with basics, you know, reading the time slip, uh, knowing, we could, knowing like, stage and procedures roll out, like all this stuff adds up. And that's how you get to the point of knowing, Hey, when you throw that clutch lever, slide that clutch lever, whatever you're doing, letting go of that button, that when you go by the Christmas tree, I mean, Dustin and I will tell you, we we don't know, but we have an idea where we are on the There's trip. been times that, you know, you I've left the line and call my light. Like, I've, I try to do that often, but there's times that I'll call it and I'll get my ticket and it's spot on to what I thought it was. Yeah, like That's within just, thousands. And that's and, what we're talking about. That also leads back to just seat time and practice and knowing how your bike reacts and how the tree looks when you're leaving and focusing on everything. You know, it's hard, mm -hmm. but we're going to help you do that. And as as you're listening to this podcast, the University of Wind conversations for me and you are going to be like so much stuff that we can talk about. Like we're going to, I could just go on and on about racing and the things that we do and tricks and learning what this is and that is. It's so elaborate that. Well, right man. there's a perfect example. I literally, 
I thought the squirrel was looking over at me, which later on he told me. He was me, looking at your front wheel, probably. Yeah, he was, but <laughs> that's 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 use all our wink no, and getting him a thumbs subject. up and everything. That's another subject. But I here I am. I was like, I'm gonna try and make him uh make a mistake. So I acted like I was like moving my thumb to hit the nitrous because I thought oh. he was looking right at me. So that was me trying a different trick in your situation. That I've never tried. I don't think I've ever tried that though. Like I tried to physically make it look like I was doing something when I wasn't in that situation. You have a racer that has a tool bag that does some, or could do some things that affect your opponent. That racer's worst nightmare is that one guy that just hits the tree and trusts his motorcycle and does not yeah. care what you're doing that. And that that's just a part of the process, you know, squirrel in his situation is he hit the tree. He was green. He probably thought he was decent. He was to the wood, trusting his bike. His bike done exactly what he thought it was going to do. He was just a little lay on the tree, and then you overcome him there. I mean, he was behind. I would have probably not been dead zero if I thought I was behind. Maybe he didn't notice it. Maybe it was that tight. But I would have probably let you go. But like I said, we can go on and on. But we can't really because that's a different whole deal, you know, on that he, subject. Uh, he let me go. He went 135 and 140 so he he let you go he was about to break out and he let you go to run well down. and here's the thing i can't even claim that i took double o even though it was a double o stripe but i i didn't do anything he he did afterwards i'm not gonna get into it because like i said it's just a next level thing but like afterwards he explained to me what happened and it made perfect sense to me why the race unfolded and why he did what he did but he actually induced mistakes from me and yeah. i just did i just got lucky on that yep. round because like I was got to have it, man. I was gotta trying to it. do things to make a mistake from him. And he stuck to his plan to a T and execute. He just didn't have a great light. I don't, I don't remember. Just the, just the other day I watched a video of, um, I think it might've been pro ET at man cup in 2019. And there was this guy racing and every round he would get about 1200 foot and he would lift his elbow. He's still wide open, but he's got his elbow straight up in the air and his opponents were letting out of it. And he was just going through and winning. Finally, he caught the right one that didn't care what he was doing, and that guy beat him. But it's just part of it, and we can go into detail on that, of course, when University of Wind gets out, and it's going to be that show and the conversations that we have on that is going to be way easier for me and you to talk about versus talking about diapers. Uh, because <laughs> yeah. we, we, I mean, we eat, leave, live, and sleep that stuff. Like, that's, you know, all we think about. And uh, um, I think it's going to be – this is a teaser – of what's to come. And uh, this is just us talking to our friends and uh, talking racing and people that can relate to it and enjoy it. But that's just giving you guys a little taste of what you could do or, you know, could join in on. And this kind of is helping us prepare ourselves, honestly, for that, to make sure that we're uh, a well-oiled machine, I guess. And we are efficient in helping every person in the university. Well, yeah, I agree with everything you just said, but also, on another point is hopefully this didn't sound like too bland and not detailed enough. Cause trust me, all the details when you sign up for the school, oh, well, yeah. we, we're not, we can't we're do not that hiding now. anything because that wouldn't benefit y'all. So our goal hey, is to have y'all beaten us. So since you know, we're talking honestly, about it, you know, I'm going to have um, clutch tuning videos on the university of wind and just conversations about clutch tuning. And I could air that stuff out anywhere. But the problem with that is, is I worked really hard to get, where I am and knowing how to tune a clutch and how they work and all that. And I just feel like that all the time I've spent hours and hours of talking to people at midnight and fine tuning what works and what don't and uh, all the great people that's walked me through it and helped me along the way, customers or whatnot, you know, tolerating me making changes. Um, I don't want to just give that away because they earned it too, you know. So there's going to be a lot of cool stuff on the University of Wynn for sure. We're excited. Um, yeah. super excited about it. So yeah, I'll, I'll kind of wrap this up and we'll get into another topic then, because we just wanted to give you an idea, uh, to sum it up. It's just an That's example, a little teaser, just an example, six rounds of racing. I had what I would call a good light an okay light and four bad lights for me. Um, I still got it done. I mean, a little bit of luck for sure. I mean, you gotta have luck. I mean, my, my rule of thumb is you gotta have one lucky round of race. Always so call it my semifinal win or, the one that I was 033 against and the other, my opponent was 033. One of those two rounds is hundred percent my lucky one. Um, but I, I just on paper, I should not have won. And in my head, I didn't feel like I was going to win that day because I was not racing good, but 
Some days it's just your day, man. Like well, it is that in no. although I wasn't confident on the starting line, I was confident you were in my other mentally, abilities. mentally prepared, right? Right, and that's what we're that's what we're talking about with the school is we're going to give you all these other tools and abilities. So I, I was confident I could talk myself into getting through that round. I was confident that I could assess my opponent better than they could assess me. Uh, you know, and that sounds bold or bragging, but I'm just I had to tell myself that to make it to the next round. You know, I had to be confident. Um, you know, I was confident that my finish line was on point and, you know, it wasn't bad that day. Uh, I just couldn't get off the starting line with any consistency. So just wanted to sum that up. Um, that was just while, while you're mentally closing that out in your head uh, and preparing yourself for the next object su subject, a object, um, object. object. Um, I just want to mention to you guys that I downloaded an app with like little sounds and stuff I could do during these podcasts. I thought it would be great. No, nah, y'all should have heard Dustin. He about cried before we Man, started. I was so, so excited sad. about this. My wife coming, like I tested it with the headset and the microphone and the phone sitting here with the app. And it was like clear, so loud and perfect. We we start, we go, you know, we get together on this and I try it and Ben can't hear nothing of it. I was so bummed. I mean, there were so many good sounds that I could have had and, pushed in there randomly on Ben when he was talking that I was going to surprise him with, and it didn't work. He was probably and I, a bunch of chickens clucking or something. Well, I had chickens in my favorites, but <laughs> <laughs> I will have something because I just think that sometimes a little sound or something would make everybody laugh and try to keep this stuff light and everybody enjoying their self. You know, even when – and I had like a little – sad sound that when Ben said he had an 080 light, I was going to push that bad boy. Wow, I wow, know we wow. Yeah, I was going to push it, man. <laughs> but here we are. And I didn't want to just do it myself because I'm old hillbilly and uh, things don't come out like I think they're going to. So I had to just sit here and kind of just make conversation with it. But uh, I will have that. He's going to talk to his he's assistant. Determined. On, he's determined. Yeah, the, the podcast uh, professional lady will uh, verify what I need to buy because I'm <laughs> buying it. Because – you know, we're sitting in front of a microphone and looking at a TV with, I'm looking at Ben's name and um, try to make it fun for us and everybody that's listening. Um, so far, we've had such great feedback that I think we're doing a good job, but I just want to be better. I'm a, I don't want to say I'm a perfectionist because I'm not perfect and never will be, but I'm always trying to be better on no matter what I do. And I will, I will get one and it's going to make it a good time. And there might be times that I push it and being still talking. Dread but... it. I, I just know to... <laughs> it's just going to be fun, man. Like, and I mean, if I have to and it works great, I'll send Ben one too. We're both going to have look. Just you know, they have beeps like when we cuss. You can beep. You know. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I might have to go edit. We did. We slipped up in the first like five minutes. Man, I, I um, did drop a bad one. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. We might, I might. Edit that one. We'll see. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> man, oh man. Well, What's hey, next? Well, uh, no, I'm done with that subject. All I was going to say right now is, um, yeah, that's that's going to be something else when you get those sound sound effects and everything going. That's why make it more interesting, man. I think so. More I mean, I was I was so excited about it. I, no, I, here's what I was going to thinking about saying. I kind of lost my train of thought. Sorry, not to cut you off, y'all. You don't know. You don't realize your man. Dustin Lee is listening to the podcast. He's critiquing himself. I have not listened to myself talk. Yeah, I am. I am. He trying is trying to, make to get sure better. That I don't do dumb things and sound like a bona fide idiot. Well, um, you sound like a hillbilly because that's half the name of the show. Well, I can't and control I can sound that. Like a redneck, I reckon. Yeah, I mean, somebody the other day they commented on Facebook and was like, "How do we uh, tune out the Southern drawl? I said, "Make drink some Jack Daniels and you'll be all right." <laughs> Dude, if you weren't on here talking like. It wouldn't even sound right. Well, you're so proper, and I'm not. Wow. So shit, far from well, proper, but you're more proper than me. And, I don't. Uh, I don't think I. I don't really come across with. I don't feel like any type of strong accent either way, right? Like not no, really, not uh -uh. northern. You kind of have a North Carolina and Virginia mix, kind of. Maybe yeah. you. You say that that's right all the time, and that's say, something what? that. <laughs> that's right. Like you say that's that. Right. Like that's yeah, right. and it sounds like you're putting like that's right together. And that's a North Carolina thing. Like okay. the girls at DME always say that. And I'm like, man, <laughs> like Ben, Ben's got the North Carolina slang down over there. You know, maybe that's what it is. I think maybe just like the middle of the country is like, it's not. I mean, the other day you said a word to me about Steven, I think when we was on the podcast and you said perplexed and I'm like, <laughs> what the is that? <laughs> and I remember oh, that sounded like you just used your like, uh, uh, 
cover the curse I, word sound. I didn't <laughs> say the word. I, <laughs> we'll make I our bleep, own sound effect. Bleep. I bleep, yeah, I bleeped it out myself. But I remember Ben talking about that. I mean, not perplexed. Ben, yeah, Spen, Spencer talking about that at a race, perplexed. No, and, uh, Spencer was uh, facetious. Oh, yeah, it was. He was yeah, like, I was like, what? Yeah, I like, don't even. This is I might have just said it wrong though. I might have just yeah. Said it wrong. So like when we uh, man, we when we go racing, like I don't know about you, but like after let's just say the gamblers race. So of course I get my butt kicked, or even if I didn't, and I like it's just Saturday yeah, but, night you win. Yeah, but you do. <laughs> right, but if I even if <laughs> I you, didn't, hold on, are you sponsoring the gamblers race again? Do you know? Yeah, I mean, whenever he sends me the contract, so I can sign it and send him money. All right, I just want to just want to make sure it's another yeah. I'm not another I'm not, free race for me. Yeah, and not not a, not discrediting anybody else. I can just immediately count Dustin out because he does not do good on Friday nights. I, I don't know why. I will. Cause you're, win. It's because uh, hard times is on the trophy. That's why. I, I will win one sooner or later. I won't stop sponsoring it until I do. I promise that. I will take it. Until, if I out. I'll be eighty five years old at XDA trying to win a hard time. One, one, one of these days. I'm yeah. Get that trophy. I mean, I'll I have won that. a race before at XDA with a cane, so I'll I'll do it again. You know, dude, I'll just give you one of mine with your. No, 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 no. I want it myself. I uh, want see, it myself. but I only. And I, that sounds bad though when I say that because then I feel like oh, I'm bragging. I don't want. Nah, y'all to, just, I don't want y'all to think we're. This on is here to what brag. we do. So actually, since we're talking about it, me, you, and like our fellow bracket racers, and even Spencer when he bracket raced, we He's give each other. Up. He ain't no good. I'd we give some. each other a really, really hard time plugging hard times parts and service there. Really hard time. <laughs> <laughs> what you doing over there, bro? <laughs> but we we like we give each other total crap when we're racing. I mean, for example, you and Boo Brown, you guys race each other talking trash before the race and talking trash after the race, and it's just that's just how we are. And the reason we can do that is because we're tight friends, and we know it's no disrespect. That's just how we are. You know, you you can give your best friend a total hard time and not um offend nobody now right, a stranger right. you can't do that you know it's just different but that's just how we are to each other we give each other a difficult time and right now we're doing my ski my kid just now scared the total crap out of me well i didn't she, hear her. What's she, she come in here to give me a kiss good night mm-hmm. and like her head popped up beside me when i'm talking <laughs> bruh I'm surprised that I didn't have a girl scream on this damn. That'd have been epic. I would not have edited. Whoa, it. my heart is going a million mile an hour. I did get a good night kiss from my sweetheart, that baby. And uh, anyway, um, you know, I didn't hear I, anything. I feel like these microphones are really good at canceling. I lost total. I don't even know where I was at, guys. Like, woo! <laughs> no, you were you were just talking about us being friends and giving each other. Yeah, hard we time, give each so. other a hard time. So if you hear me and Ben like a little talk trash to each other, we're not bragging either way. We're just, you know, that's just how we are. We just do that. And uh that's just I mean, really, that's just a good friendship because yeah. you can only do that with good friends. Yeah. You, know, you can't talk trash to just anybody because some people can't take it. And I probably shouldn't say this because this kind of goes against what I'm gonna really say in the fact that like I was gonna just mentioned sorry if we're apologizing or going back so much on stuff which you know sounds dumb when you're saying sorry we're sorry but you know we're just trying to get used to this guy so we you know we don't want to offend anybody at least not yet well, i mean you know, we'll, we'll wait till like episode like 28 to offend somebody you, but- you just said that i listen to these and that's why i'm trying to make sure that when i do talk i mean there's sometimes i try to like come you know respond to you and then you're going still and i'm trying not to do that because i want this to be fluid Everybody understand what everybody's saying. That's why I relocated my microphone. I'm praying that it's fixed. I haven't heard you cut out tonight. So I think, I think so far, I, I definitely heard you a few times last time. So I yeah. think we're doing good. I yeah. want to note that Tiffany has listened to the podcast and she said, I say like, um, like, um, so I already got a complex over that. So I'm sorry. Cause yeah, he was like, doing that before we like come. I'm we going to probably say it, I guess. I don't before know. we started recording, he kept doing it. He goes, God, I'm all to pieces about that yeah. now. And I'm like, Thanks, hey, man, just, just let it roll. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm, so I just now said like, but I don't, I'm sure I say things repetitively, but we're just talking, man. Like it is what it is. I hope you guys are enjoying it. Um, but what are we talking about next? Let's, uh, I don't know. Just you're kind of working on your stuff over the winter. It's winter time. We hit that huge. We're going to talk topic. some upgrades. Yeah. Let's talk winter time upgrades. Tell everybody what you got going on with your bikes. Cause you um, always have stuff going on. I don't. So, you know, much. old faithful as I call her, my little bracket bike I run. 
I run around 560 and all the ET stuff and usually any kind of gamblers or a shootouts I beat on it because it's just a little 1441 and she can take it. Um, really all I'm doing to that thing is freshening the motor up, putting some new uh, LED lights for lighting, like the rear tail light and the front headlight. I'm upgrading them because the old ones are getting kind of dull. I'm going to clean up some things, uh, new brake lines from Core Moto, and um, I'm going to get um, a new clutch cover for it because the old one was faded. Um, I'm going to put that cover, actually I already have, on um, the Trunchable. The Trunchable is a project um, that I'm building. It's a bike that me and my wife used to ride when we first started dating. It's an 03 GSX-R1000, originally a Matt Maladden edition. Um, we started dating. I rode on the street. It was actually, I started racing a little bit. It was stock wheelbase and it was a nightmare. Um, yeah, Cause you can't ride I, stock wheelbase. You ain't got no clutch hand. You ain't got no well, skills. I actually rode it really well. <laughs> it was just, those bikes have no guts and I didn't really, I wasn't a street bike racer back then. I was a bar bike racer and I didn't know that if I put some teeth on that thing, it, it'd haul the tubby weight, weight rider a little bit better. Um, a lot of people don't, probably don't know that though, that you, you, primarily race bar bikes first right my first drag bike was a, a kz was a drag bike right yeah, yeah a kz 1000 with a 1075 mm -hmm. street kit that run like 650s and uh it was a good in girl <laughs> yeah yeah in the eighth um it was very slow it actually was so slow that one point i took the willy bars off of it because it didn't need it didn't need them i just took them off um you probably remember that because i raced it at bristol that way back when you raced there so um but when Tanner raced so, a four-wheeler yeah. yeah what color but, was uh, it was it it was like a like blue, a blue, yeah, yeah, a light blue with about. silver. A friend of mine painted it for me, and he was like, "I want to paint it for you, I'll sponsor." Man, it. I'll tell you something. F that four wheeler, man. F, F like, that four wheeler. And no offense, I love Tamara, but man, her on that four wheeler was a mess. I almost crashed racing four wheelers. So I mean, I'm against bringing, the four wheelers, <laughs> I'm I'm bringing her back. You know, I'm I'm trying. My wife wants to be involved, and she wants to race. So there's some things that I requested her to do before she gets to race the bike that I call the Trunchable. The reason I call the bike the Trunchable is because I, I sent the frame. You had never seen the movie Matilda? No. Man. Well, if you've watched the movie Matilda, <laughs> the listeners will know that they go to this school and the principal was called the Trunchable. Now, the yeah. Trunchable was a very large, manly woman, mm. and she was mean. And um, this bike is going to be mean. It's a little petite GSX-R1000. Uh, DME modified the frame for me for a BUSA motor. So it's going to have, uh, can I say balls? I guess I can. It's going to have balls. It's going to be tough. It's going to be dependable uh, with the BUSA motor. And it should be pretty quick considering what it is. It's kind of stockish motor. But she wants to race it. And the stockish. only. That sounds like some Claycomb shit. Yeah. I mean, stockish. To, <laughs> to me, if, if to me these days, man, if they're, if they got a stock crank and stock bore, I mean, a head and cam don't do nothing, you know, and it, it supposedly has some head work, but I didn't go into detail. I pulled it apart, checked the bearings, look up the cylinders, everything looked good, put it back together. And it seems fine. So, um, but I was, you're, so you're getting that together though for you and for Tamara? Her. Or? Well, I'm going to ride it to make sure it's good. And then she can't ride it until she passes my, um, test, I guess you'd call it. Oh, wow. Um, okay. I told her that I, I'm still shopping for one. I'm going to find like a, uh, Two stroke 85 or maybe a four stroke 150R model dirt bike. And when she can get in her field and launch it and go through every gear up the field easily and repetitively, then she can handle that race bike no problem. I just don't want my wife to get hurt. Um, no, my daughter, that. my daughter needs her mama more than, you know, if something happened to me, I think my daughter would be fine because she's got her mama. Um, but I can't be getting my best friend hurt. So, she has stipulations before she gets to race. Uh, I'm building it to my standards. It should be really nice. Um, there's a lot of things I'm waiting on. I could probably make it race ready in like a week if I wanted to, but I'm waiting on stuff so it ain't got me driven to do it. So, so right you've now, got this Jixer Busa hybrid trunchable that you're yep. putting together yep. for eventually for Tamara to race. Yep, it's going to be primed awesome. until she proves me if she can ride or not. If she don't successfully do the test on the dirt bike deal, <laughs> it's going to be blue. If she does, <laughs> it'll be whatever color she desires. You know, she's um, going to do just fine. It, yeah, I think so. She's a really good racer. Um, the fuller was easy, right? You don't have to focus on dry, riding it; you're just driving it, kind of guiding it. Um, I think yeah. the bike will be fine too once she gets used to the dirt bike. I want her. 
the best motorcycle drag racers are people that can ride a dirt bike. You know, I, oh, I grew up riding dirt bikes. I mean, as a kid, we'd make ramps and buy concrete and make jumps and like yeah, whatever. Four wheelers. That's why I'm not that very good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like we lived on them. Like we, like I, my dad had a salvage yard, so you guys know that from older episodes, I think. And I, we lived on them. Yeah. And I mean, like every day. No, like I, I would, agree a hundred percent. Yeah, it makes you I've very agile. It. You know, if anybody listening has rode a, a KX80, my personal bike when I was a kid was a KX80. My dad built for me, and it was like a 100 overboard. It was pretty stout. It run really good. And them things will bust you in the mouth quicker than a race bike ever will. Like, oh, they're yeah. just, you know, the two strokes are so violent. And I want her to get familiar with the part, where like, when you launch it on a dirt bike and you pin it and the power band comes in and you hit second and it's kind of bebopping the tire and wanting to wash one way and the other. I want her to get to where she can finesse the bike and do that and not panic. When she does that, she is golden. And that's the step that I wanted to take. Um, that bike will be pretty cool. And then Old Faithful right now, but really I just got the bottom end together last night. Um, it's just finished the motor up, button that stuff up, and then it's kind of on its way back together and then finish up a few loose ends. Um, the big change for me was I've never done this. I took my top gas, top sportsman bike to Gage Herrera at Herrera uh, Motorsports, I guess he calls it, or Herrera Racing, um, and he rewired it for me. There was nothing wrong with what I'd done already. The wiring I'd done, it was my very first standalone. Um, the bike has a holly on it, and he rewired it for me. I really pushed him out of his element. I had him wire up a pigtail for a delay box because I want to delay box that thing delay box race it with you some with the cars i want to have the option to race yes sir i want to race door cars and have the option if i want to run five o's against door cars i can you know dude and, it's uh, shit it's all awesome. so i thought ahead and had him wire that stuff up for me and um you know he don't he's never he's never wired delay box on standalone he's also never wired a mallet magnet on a delay you know a standalone bike but he t dude he literally needed me for nothing i told him what i wanted he did it outstanding job all the wiring is clean nice everything works just like it should i've went through all the tests and run everything through tests just to make sure it was ready before i pulled the motor out of it it's golden so that bike gets the motor yanked out uh, typical freshen up for me um i'm doing the same thing on it uh, new brake lines from core uh, i'm actually going to core clutch lines i'm taking the stock clutch lines off both bikes i'm going to get some stuff on it powder coated or anodized i'll probably sit the dme and let them do it other than that, I'm going to touch them up, make them look a little cleaner, clean some stuff up. Performance-wise, I think they've got everything they need. Um, the swing arm's kind of old. I've got one on order. I don't know if I'll have it back before the season starts. Kind of um, old? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's been on there since like uh, oh, six, Lord 16. I just want to take this time to point out that what Dustin just went through is like, oh, I just didn't like you. Damn it. Anyways. What Dustin just went through sounded like a completely like packed winner for me. Like I would have never even took that job on. And like, that's low key for him. He did not do that much. He's, he's building a bike. He's refreshing two motors. Um, you know, I've that's, also that's, got that's light to, work, light work. I've, I've also done one customer's motor already and got <laughs> another one lined up. Yeah. So wild, dude. I've wild. got a load lot lined up. Um, the biggest thing for me on the top gas bike was a big deal because I took my bike somewhere else. I've never had my motorcycles anywhere, but my possession. So yeah, yeah, I ain't going to lie for three weeks. Um, I would look at my lift and felt like a little sad kid that somebody took my <laughs> ice cream away. Um, three weeks, actually, that's quick. Gage, can, Gage knocked that Well, out. we had this all planned like pre, like I guess you'd say I was in I line. Like you but threatened you my bike in. I feel like wire and stuff is never. Hey man, <laughs> I, I, I actually messaged him and, um, I might have talked about this the last episode. I was like, hey, man, you know, how's my bike doing? He's like, what's well, leaking in my shop floor? I'm oh, like, I do remember because we were talking yeah. about diapers. And you said, I was you like, don't know when stuff's leaking with the diaper. Yeah, because I was like, man, it must be crying because it misses me. Yeah. And he's like, what's well, sitting beside my pro street bike? I said, oh, it's probably pissed itself. But yeah, um, it ended up being <laughs> the, the, you know, the the seals on the, the dummy shaft, the bouncer shaft is probably, that's where it's leaking from. So they're probably tired, which I replace that stuff every year. So. I was gonna I, go with the uh, the one bolt on the oil pan that needs that uh, little O ring. Yeah, that goes under washer. the clutch. Yeah, yeah it's like the back yeah. corner. 
Yeah, so I buy those. Like I buy like ten of those at a time from Suzuki to have when I refresh my motors. I got them. You know. Yeah, that's smart because like nobody ever has those, and then you. Yeah, even the you know all your whatever. case bolts, like not all of them, but there are certain case bolts that require them on the top that has like a copper washer, and if you don't put it, it's going to leak. You know, yeah. so uh, there's little stuff like that, like the motor. Last night, honestly, when I got done, I put the pan and everything on it, flipped it over, and you know it's ready for the pistons and cylinder. Um, I looked at it. I'm like, man, that was almost so easy. I feel like I didn't do something right, you know, but I've done it so much. And, you know, I get a lot of questions about people want me to do motors for them. And I really don't take on the work because I feel like if something goes bad, that it's always going to be my fault. I mean, honestly, and, I wouldn't for that reason alone. Yeah. And, and I, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, honestly, like my motors, the first time I fire them, I'm listening to everything they do, right? Looking at oil pressure, very aware of the situation. And they earn their trust me i mean because a race motor is a race motor they could a part could fail any time and it could yeah. not even be my fault on assembly and so Look, they earn my trust. outlook that's my general outlook and i learned that from my dad when i was growing up and i feel like i don't feel like enough people look at stuff like this but i was always taught when i was younger like we're buying race stuff there's no guarantees and there's no warranties now you didn't now, buy this from a dealership that way you know what i mean so yeah but i'm talking about like anything like i'm talking about if you buy I don't, I'm, I don't know what exactly like a nitrous kit or whatever, or, yeah. or if you had somebody like I was just always brought up and taught like race stuff. There's no warranties. There's no guarantee. That being said, there are some products, some companies that warranty and guarantee stuff. But I'm just, it's just, so to me, I don't have that expectation. I well, guess see that it's crazy at. for me. Like is, some people do though. You know what I mean? I, my, 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 ugh, I can't even talk. My, 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 <laughs> my emotional process of the motors is, you know, you fire them up, and I hope they're going to be all right. You go test them, running good, pull your filter off, everything's clean. You go test them again, you pull it off, everything's clean. I think they're good to go. All evening, all season, you're like, man, I hope this thing's all right. And then toward the end of the year, you're like, man, this thing's wore out. It's tired, man. It's about to go any time, you know. And I just, I'm, Meanwhile, I can do it. Meanwhile, I'm like, man, should I change my oil this year? <laughs> yeah, I change my oil every two races. You no, know, so. But, I mean, also, you know, I pull my bracket back apart. It probably made, I don't know, 450 runs ish last year and the barons all look like they could go another year um there's a little wear but them? no i put new <laughs> ones i actually i see i have so many so many notes like when i build my motors you know i don't measure stuff for baron taunches i use plastic gauge and it's old school but i do that because that's actual truth you know what i mean like it ain't a number you measure it's like actually the squish and I'm, and it's kind of like a a gray area of what the number is, but it gives you a, you know, you got a gauge and yeah, I mean, so I, I'm, I'm taking your advice. You kind of know my experience. Like, so I've, yeah. I've been around, we built, we built Steven's motor. Being right. you and well, I did it with, for years with Brian. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. I mean, I've been around it and, and done it. Like, can I Ben Knight put together a motorcycle engine? Yeah. A hundred percent, especially with, you know, the actual manual, because I've, I'm good at like reading and doing blah, blah, blah. That's fine. Yeah. But like, I don't. Because one do, time I you forgot a case own. bolt, right? Wasn't there one time you forgot the case bolt under a balancer shaft on a boost thing? You was tearing the cases up trying oh, to get out, and Doug Gall saved yeah. the day. <laughs> I feel like I did not. I don't know. Yeah, I just yeah, you're hundred you, percent right. Yeah, he traded you his good cases for those. He said he could use them or something. Yeah, I I didn't I didn't a hundred percent destroy, but I almost. Yeah, I, I beat I beat up a set of cases because I got the damn, <laughs> damn bolt under the uh, balancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it goes if you on have a balancer, that thing's hidden. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he was helping it was like a stock Brian motor out. or something. Yeah, but it was mine. I think. Yeah, yeah it was mine. Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. So I've that's my experience level. Like I, so I, dude, I am not getting in the in that convo with you know. Yeah. So or, kind or of what I was. Uh, I, I'm just saying. Hopefully, we don't get a bunch of feedback. Like that's not how you build an engine. But hey, look. Yeah. And this is my opinion. Dustin can tell you different. I feel like there's plenty of really good engine builders that have oh, yeah. different approaches. And that's cool. Yeah. I'm all about that. Like if something's working, go for it. But I like, mean, there's a lot of people that have full blown oil mods on a Busa. And man, my motors has got high volume oil pump gears, oil pressure relief valves, and they're stock. Like I think I might have pinched my piston squirters one year, like maybe last year, just to give me some more oil pressure. But then I still let them allow them to squirt the wrist pin. But other than that, you know, I, I take a lot of notes when I put motors together, and then when oh, I take them good. apart, when I take them apart, Data. I take more. Well, I take I take notes again of what I see and what's war. So it's funny. What's what? War, wore out. Where? What's what's worn? How about that? Is that better? Um, 
<laughs> so when I took it apart this time, I noticed that one, three, and five main bearing had the little wear on the sides. Nothing bad, but just a little. And I was like, man. So I go back to my notes. Sure enough, one, three, and five was the looser ones of the ones that I, when I put it together, and I was like, I'm going to send it and see where we're at. So I tightened those up this time. So I spent a little time last night of plastic gauging and getting where I wanted everything and put it back together. But it's it's a top end away. I'll probably have that bike running maybe this weekend. Maybe. I don't know yet. Depends on how I feel. See, I got to get in the I mood. don't plastic gauge anything. I just put all greens in. People do that. But, you know, like just like I just now said, you know, I had one brown and all blacks and I had some wear and I had to tighten them up. Well, I in that the reason I said that is that like honestly, that's just an example of like there's different you know methods to build engines, right, wrong, and different. Like I, yeah, I mean, I've if never you have a grudge knock on wood, I've never you know I've never had any personal issues with any of my Busa motors. I don't think they're tough, man. Like I could run my box two or three years probably, but well, I'm telling would... you and the listeners, like if if my any of my motors have been working, well, I guess it'd be all well, my two bikes, both of them. Yeah, they all got green bearings. We measure. Well, yeah, even the one that we built for Steven at Spencer's house that time, you had green barons, and I was like, you just want, <laughs> you just want to put these in there? He's like, yeah. I'm like, all right, we just put them in there, you know? And Yeah, uh, but it, Spencer it's screwed us He's won us some up serious money on that thing. He has, and Spencer screwed us because it leaks oil. Well, who 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 was right, though, on that? Who, I didn't who was... disagree with you. I I would have so done I, for the listeners, did. For the listeners, when you take a bone stock high boost engine apart, your valve cover has these, I call them like eyebrows, like little half you know, moons, like what I half call moons that goes yeah. in the each side of the head. Well, from the if you're familiar they, with an engine, you know exactly what we're talking about. It's the valve yeah. cover gasket. Yeah. And then the, you know, the half moons have like a light coat of Permatex to seal it. Cause even though it cradles the head, you know, heat all runs down, yada, yada. Yeah. We was putting it together. I'm like, Hey, you need to put a little silk on that. Oh, Spencer's like, that'd be fine. I'll never do that. Well, like three races in, it was leaking on, you know, Hell, I think um, it was the first race and it was leaking oil. And that's the worst part. Of but then what, it. what did he say? What did, what did that fool tell us? He said, well, I never, he said, I always take my motors apart after every race. So I just, it's harder for me to get the valve cover off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he said, you yeah, know, well, this one's not coming apart after. Every that's race. the worst part of like, for me, like freshening my engines up is just the cleanup, like cleaning the cases and. I well, you know what the worst part is? Getting the damn valve cover off half the time, Bro, especially so my if it's bracket, got the old uh, pins in it. Well, you, see, back in the day, removed. back in the day when I run stock style cam chains, I pull my valve cover off often and roll the motor over and check the chain to make sure it ain't going to let go on me. And they never had that issue. Well, now that I run AP roller chains, I'm like, I ain't got no reason to take that off. Well, I had to beat the valve cover off that head this time. So I'm like, well... I might pull my valve cover off like a couple of times a year just to lube it with some anti-seas and put it back together because it pins. Now, my top it? gas motor doesn't have that. Vance and Hines welds the – they weld the holes up so it don't have that. Okay, that's awesome. what I was going to say. It's those damn pins. That, but it's for the, the pins. You know, you can't well, buy those pair pins. Valve or yeah. Pair, right? Yeah. yeah, and you can't buy those. Like, that's you can't you can't go to Suzuki and buy that. I don't know if they come with the head or if they the come pin? with the valve cover. Yeah, you cannot yeah, buy those. No, no, you can't buy them because nobody on the face of the planet has ever wanted to buy them, ever. Yeah, yeah the, the, you can't. They're, I call them dowel pins. You know, they're like a alignment pin for the valve cover kind yeah, of. Yeah, but they're the, the pair to go through. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I guess you could get one out and then have someone like make some. You Dude, know? I've mauled them trying to get them out because they've frustrated me. To, well, so, I had I mean, one I've, so bad one time well, that we just epoxied the head full and just blocked them off and was like screw those things. You know, I hate um, those things. Those. Give me, oh, I'm getting like, mad. Could you imagine about. somebody that's raced their bike for like 10 years, like a Gen 2 Busa, and has never had their valve cover off? I have a, I have a like, a, kind of similar to cases, but not as bad because I had all the bolts out and stuff. But like, I have a valve cover in a box somewhere. I don't even know why I still have it. I just, but it's like pride with screwdrivers. Yeah. Like, like it would still in a pinch, I guess, be usable. Maybe that's so why I still got it. What I, I did know, was like, I've destroyed a one, at least one valve cover. I had to take the the you know the pair valve lock offs off, and I squirted PB blaster down the the pair hole to hopefully it would like succumb all the fungus in there. And I just kept beating it, and finally it was like, all right, I'm done here, and it come off. I'm like, thank God. I was about ready to go on Facebook and try to find a used valve cover because I didn't know if it's going to survive, but it come off. But I just got to button that dude up, and I'm gonna try to have it running this weekend. Maybe maybe the first day. I got to go to a banquet next weekend, so that'll be kind of rough, but um heck yeah so other than that man right like I've, I've got yeah i mean the other bikes got me nervous i gotta get the head to eddie and stuff but i've already 
he's aware that my head's coming, so he's kind of got me in line. So I got to get that to him, get it took care of, freshened up. Nice. So you got what are you doing? Plenty of stuff going on. Me, man, you know nothing. Me, he got a no, box scattered all across not, the garage. Shoot. I mean, you know me, I'm not changing the oil. Um <laughs> uh, well, so I'm still it's been so long, I don't even know if anybody remembers, but like my original, what I call my my old faithful. I and first of all, I'm pretty sure I coined old faithful. Yeah, my bike I, used to be called the moneymaker. Yeah, yeah, I coined Old Faithful, and then you took it as well, which I'm not mad and at. And she you. just kept being so good to me. I had yeah. to just give her that credit. You know? But my Old Faithful has not been, <laughs> what do you call it, active for three years now, I guess. Yeah, Probably. she's off duty. It like it was, it was really weird. I had an electrical gremlin for probably the last year I was racing it and just couldn't ever figure it out. Long story short, I, after the fact, after I sold everything, and I, I, I took this bike down to nothing. Like it's, it literally is in a billion pieces, but that was because I said, you know what? I got a problem. I can't find, I'm going to rebuild this thing when I have the time, money and energy to do it right. And from the ground up, cause this old faithful, this baby had treated me right. I, Can we I, talk about whew. that bike? How many miles on that motorcycle when you bought it? Oh yeah. So this bike was. Well, old man is, road right it is my the original bike is a 2004 uh hibusa i think it was a limited edition whatever that was and me and uncle jerry found it and i don't I it bought a it. center I, stand baby i'm trying to it had a center stand <laughs> this, so the story was did did david have something to do like that with yeah that? david snapped the guy come to his okay. shop or something yeah, yeah for whatever reason I, for, uh, as, as we're telling the story that just rang david snap like owns david, a shop here close like, it's custom cycle corner in knoxville tennessee yeah and then even farther back this is when i lived in bristol tennessee so like yeah. we were, i was looking for a bike i guess or this came across i don't know if however but we came across it i want to say it was like 4200 bucks this thing was not in bad shape or anything, you know. It was a like good eight out of ten, probably. Stuff. Yeah. Shoot, I mean, I would probably go six and a half, seven. It had scratch okay. stuff, but it had a center stand. This an old man had any, any rode it. He tore it on it. Like, I think he might have had saddlebags. I don't know. It had a center stand. This thing had like forty two thousand miles on it. I thought it said like forty k on it. Yeah, it had over crazy. forty. Is it like forty or forty one? And uh, I mean, and, dude, that's a boost. That engine was just broken. It was a Gen One, obviously, two thousand four, and uh, that that's the basis of my old faithful. And over the years, you it beat morphed. the snot out of that bike forever. And then that motor went to a bar bike and got the snot beat out of it again later on. Uh, yeah, it did. Yeah. So I I ran it in that variation as a Gen One for quite a few years. I don't know. Let's call it three, four years, and then I found a Gen Two motor, and we jammed. Yeah, you got that the one from there. EJ. At Brock's, right? Well, I got the, his old bike, so I think I've just found another one. Oh, okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, you're close. Yeah. So yeah, I got yeah. a Gen 2 motor, stuffed it in there. Of course, you know, I didn't clearance anything. I just let the chain do the work. <laughs> yeah, he was like, there's metal. <laughs> there's metal all over my wheel. I'm like, what, did you clearance the frame yeah, for a Gen somebody, 2 motor? Yeah, nah, it was probably nah. Dustin that told me that. Yeah, It was. <laughs> We're at a race one day, and like, I did, the funny thing is, or it's probably not even funny, it's just ignorant on my part. I didn't, I didn't notice it. No, like I didn't notice it for like I would probably yeah, like nope. half a year. He'd be like a while. Coast, like we raced. He'd be a coasting lot. in the trailer and it's going rah, 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 But like I raced a lot. <laughs> and finally, when I noticed is like one of the rare times I probably lubed or cleaned my chain. And I'm like, damn, there's like metal shavings everywhere. <laughs> and I'm sure it was you because you're always discovering my in what yeah. you call it, inefficiencies or in i don't know what that you want time to rip the back brakes off of it well that's the story. but <laughs> so dustin's like man he's like did you clearance the damn frame or whatever you said in your accent yeah. i was like man I don't, no <laughs> no yeah some, I don't know what some people about. some people clearance the frame some people cut the sprocket down the inside some people what cut the spacer uh, down this transmission is just the shaft hair, sticks out offset shaft. yeah so at realistically you're your trans your front sprocket and your rear sprocket probably wasn't really perfectly aligned either. No, they weren't, but you know, whatever. I ran with it and I won, it won some races too on that bad boy. Man, so that and then so the Gen 2 motor got picked up some uh you know some 18 speed and then I got hooked up with my um they're they're great friends of mine now, their family, uh uh Tracy and Luke and the whole Montgomery Motorsports uh, crew. And that that bike yeah. always had mile per hour. Like Man, it was a mile per hour put queen. That thing on a diet, and that thing has like all carbon and like, like that's what I'm. Oh, there I'm saying the like. 
that's where yeah. I got it. I'm getting excited. All right. I'm gonna tell you, yeah. no, I'm getting excited. So where that bike had all this lightweight carbon fiber bodywork and stuff on it, like subframe, like a bunch of stuff, like uh, most of the stuff. I think you it eventually lagged. made it like a head and cam, didn't you? Like super sport or something? Yeah. And that helped it too. I a think bit. that, no, that yeah. thing had a, I can't super remember. Super sport I, head, like it was decked or something. We decked the pistons. head, Brian and I, we decked the head and we, it's stock bore, stock crank, all that stuff. I th- I'm just trying like to remember. Like decked head and some cams, like a super we, sport package type deal. Yeah, but we put baby cams in too. Yeah. So it was just like yeah. mild cams. I want to say like. Between sweet. that and the lightweightness, it, that, that thing was all, like it would run you know, eight eighties at like 150 something, like no problem, oh, like almost 160. Yeah. yeah. It's like it, that thing would mile per hour in the eighth. It'd go anywhere from 125 to 128. And in the quarter, it'd be 155 to 158. Like, yeah. Clockwork. And the eighth mile would be like a 570, but it would back half so good because it was so light, you know, <clears throat> man, that thing would come on in. Yeah. But what where I was going with that is like, it had all this lightweight stuff, but it wasn't the whole bike. So like I had this heavy, excuse me, under braced uh arm that i had bought used you know that had been using this yeah. arm for years that's one that i ripped the brake off but you know it was yeah. heavy because it's under brace like i don't need an under brace bike makes 200 horsepower um, i mean help pro street bikes don't even have under bracing these days yeah so so it was that um and that man we won a lot of races me and my girl we we did good um then that uh, was yeah that was your biggest like you went from riding Jerry stuff a little bit here and there to ride. That was your, your baby. Like you took well, that yeah, I rode Jerry everywhere the year. And then yeah. we, uncle Jerry helped me. We, we got that bike or I got that bike and he helped me build it in his basement. And then that, then I had my own bike. Yeah. We rode that. Like, so we're yep. progressing got then on gen two motor, all car. But then the, like the last year is like, when I just had all these electrical gremlins uh Probably them Multiple stupid shorts. gauges you had on that thing. Remember, I no, I think I have them in my garage right now in a tote somewhere. You know what it was? Is that power? Is the power commander? Yeah, yeah. Because remember, after I parted everything out, because like, so my idea was that I was going to take this thing apart and and reward it for first off, you know, forty thousand miles of touring. Then like, no shit. I bet. What do you think, man? All the year. What do you think? I put three thousand miles racing on it. Probably like probably legit. Probably was there so. with like five percent maintenance? Yeah, I'm, I'm bad. <laughs> I am. I'm gonna bad. get you a sticker that it. says uh, "No maintenance. maintenance required." No, it's yeah. no maintenance required is what my sticker yeah. should say. So I was gonna. Uh, so my plan is full build up. Um, I already got uh, my. I mean, I got to get the frame. I'm getting everything powder coated or anodized, but he's gonna make it nice. Yeah, everything's gonna be nice, and it deserves it. And I'm I'm hoping it'll you know treat me right after that, but. You know, full frame up rebuild. So brand new swing arm, got rid of that heavy old swing arm. That one I'd probably say five, eight. Hey, pounds can I ask that. you something? Yeah. What kind of ECU are you gonna run? Man, I don't know yet. <laughs> I was ready to go wah, wah, wah. <laughs> it, Dustin's doing that because I'm I'm considering a fuel tech. I and I have my reasons. I've told Dustin, I'll, well, I'll tell y'all my reasons for potentially now I'm not committing possibly using a fuel tech is this simple for me and it's that a i have a built-in dash which i kind of want on that particular bike um just a couple of reasons you know i'm that bike could probably be set up to run 820 with a little bit of spray or 890 like just be able to swap back and forth on i guess tune-ups is what you would call or settings whatever so dash is built in um i mean I, and i know you got to get other stuff with with it but dash is there and then the other selling point for me is that there's um, the built-in delay box. So I don't really plan on ever delay box racing that bike, but I want to have that option. Like if, if my other bike's down or something. So I just want to have that option. It's built in. So all I have to do so, is just put my mallet magnet. I, from I'll Dustin be real on. with, I'll be real with everybody. There's nothing wrong with the fuel tech. Um, for me personally, the delay box built in as a flag because I get so much heat now. People saying I cheat this and that. I didn't want oh. a delay box feature built in. Something. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't want, like I, I, the Holly doesn't have a delay box built in. So you have to like wire in a delay box. Like I said earlier. Right. So if you see a delay box on my handlebars, I'm using it. If it's not there, then I'm not. And that's, I mean, they all do the same thing. And since we're talking about it, standalones, if you're looking to buy a standalone, I'm a Holly guy because it's all I ever used. And I really like the software. So it's like a smartphone, right? So if you, 
prefer iPhone yeah. or Android yeah. or whatever, I suggest everybody just to download the software and decide which one they understand the most because realistically, you're going to be the one messing with it. Yeah, so you got to understand it. You know, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And all you already have a Max on your one bike, right? A Max yeah, on the other on, one. On my blower bike, I got a Max, and all. And I'll just add this with what Dustin said. Like, first off, if you're looking at standalones, do exactly what Dustin said. Download the software and just start playing with it. You can download all this stuff. Um, as yep. far as I just know. to get so, familiar with it, and yeah. you can see if you like the the interface because that's really what it comes down to. It's you know, it's, yeah, because like I, you hand me an iPhone, I'm lost, right? But yeah. Android, I can go through that whole thing. You know what I mean? So, so it's the interface. The bottom line is pretty much most ECUs can do whatever you can do with them. So it's well, user, it's how comfortable you are with them. Now they all got little features that are a little bit different, but you know, Dustin's comfortable, with Holly and. As he mentioned, I got a Max on my blower bike. Um, I mean, I'm I wired a, I wired a Max up on Wes's bike for him. You yeah. know what I mean? I installed it. And the Max has a feature that the Holly don't, that I dig, is when you wire one up, it has these little test buttons to test mm -hmm. everything, yeah. every output. I think that's sweet. I, I have to, like, make a map in my Holly to go through a, a test sequence in my nitrous just to purge everything and make sure that everything's working correctly. I know how to do it. It's a little bit more work than just pushing a button. You know what but I'm saying? The, the flip side, though, too, is doesn't Holly have it where you can just swap um, basically wires in the ECU? Yeah, you can. I mean, you can swap every like you, dude, you can do if you can think it, it'll do it. Like there, I could be other ECUs have that. But I, I thought I thought maybe you or Spencer had told me once, like, you know, like, say, if you like pin the connector wrong, like you just swap them in the ECU. Oh something. yeah. You have a, they're probably all that way. Like you have a pin polarity, map. I guess maybe, yeah. maybe it's just yeah. Oh, maybe yeah. 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 You're right. So there's some connectors that's, you know, well, based you off of, on max. Well, yeah, you could swap them on them all. Cause I've done that, but some of them are dedicated. Like, maybe y'all explained them, to me and I was drinking. I was just like, that's a cool shit. Probably, probably told Darnell about it. <clears throat> yeah. Anyways, but, ignore me. Uh, realistically on the standalone thing, the good hillbilly description of it is there's more than one way to skin a cat. That's <laughs> it. You know what I mean? Like you can, I mean, I've thought about, you know, we I go to some dark racetracks that's really dark at the finish line, and that's a weak point for me is, like, seeing the finish line when it's dark because I run a dark you shield. Wear, I, I was just getting ready to say this because you wear a damn dark shield. All night. the time. I will not I will not change my I shield between my daylight and dark. But anyway, Personal I, have, I have contemplated on having my Holly, like, if I'm at an eighth mile track, at 5.4 seconds in the run, I'm going to have me some LEDs and go, boom, let there be light. And just light up the finish line so I can see that daggum thing. And uh, I've thought about it. Like, all it would take was, like, a good, you know, four-inch little light pod and have that thing kind of pointing straight out. I'd be able to see anything down there. But if you can think it, it can do it. Those things, the cool thing about a Holly is it's a hot rod ECU, right? They put them on classic cars or whatever to update their technology from carburetors to fuel injection. And I'm – I'm into kind of cars now a little bit more. So I'm I'm taking something that I already know from my box and putting it right into my Pontiac G8, which I think is cool. So it's, you know, I'm sure you can do that with all of them, but it's yeah, just it's what, all what you're comfortable with. Yeah. And Basically, if you have, a, if you're interested in Holly stuff, get with Dustin. Well, I mean, I sell them all. I will sell you all of them. Um, but I pick He's and choose. most a, familiar with the Holly though. Personally. Yeah. A little bit, but I've also looked at it a whole lot, you know, but yeah, I'm not no genius in any of them. Um, sometimes I we, have to phone a on a frame threw me under the bus because you just wanted to make fun of me because i was considering a fuel tech but well, those, i didn't my reasons those are my yeah reasons. i didn't i didn't give you a hard time like i do no. normally about it i just said no. want 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 so yeah, i know but and people know where i'm going that knows yeah, me yeah 100 and it's all jokes and we're just good having a good oh, time yeah. it's just like no, for sure i drive a dodge and if a guy pulls up in the ford in my drive i'm like man how'd you even make it here in that thing and you <laughs> like fords you know what i mean so that's just how it is. I like fords yeah i mean they i ain't gonna lie i had their a, stuff I had a F three fifty. I was gonna say I you still love think that Ford though. That had the best cab ever because there's so much cab space in the F three. You love that Ford. Dude. Yeah, it just had a piece hey, of crap. Y'all heard it right here. Dustin it had a Ford. It had a piece of crap front end in it. What it had. Yeah, I don't know about that. I don't remember that. Yeah, but I mean, realistically, what else are we gonna talk about? You got a little bit. Well, you can play talk about faithful, your Pro Charge. I mean, like that's that's what I'm doing with it. It's like it's not gonna be out this year. 100 percent not. Oh, um, so you're just taking Spencer's crap again. No, oh. man, that fool, he came out of the house. I love him to death. They stopped by on their way back from visiting family um, over the holidays. And he was like looking around. He's like, where's your other bike at in your garage? I'm like, so there's the frame and engines in those three totes. And here's the new swing arm over here and forks are over here. And he's like, 
what are you doing? I was like, waiting for time, money, energy, like <laughs> what we all do. <laughs> we're, 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 we're dreaming we're... about making, building a bike back. And he's like, oh, I'm like, and I said, Spencer, why do you think I had your bike all last year? He's like, I don't know. And I was like, oh, okay, well. Thanks for listening to me, buddy. Just so y'all know, Ben could be building a race bike, but instead we're podcasting, talking to y'all because we love y'all. Well, I mean, yeah, that is half true, I guess. But I, <laughs> me though is like, I you're just, not motivated to well, build a bike right now. No, I am, but I mean, like, I also got to, you know, for what the way that I envision my bike is, like, I I was going is frame up, rebuild. So I got to get the frame and the swing arm powder coated. I got a brand new swing arm. I got uh, a nice set of forks from Kevin at Manchester Mines already. They're done. So they're ready. I already got my wheels. Those aren't changing. Um, but then, you know, then it's everything else. I mean, I, we're talking a full engine rebuild because I'm I'm going to spice it up this time. Uh, going to get a, a stouter engine. It's not going to be stockish. It's going to be wildish. About and a 1507. Then, uh, 1507 sounds nice. It sounds that's what we talked perfect. about. Yeah, so be right down your alley. We're looking at a 1507. Going to do a full standalone. I mean, it'll probably be either a Max or a Fuel Tech. I don't know. Maybe a 820s at 175 on motor. Um, so yeah, it's just it's a lot going to. And I mean, when you start adding that stuff up, it's a lot of money. I mean, like I'm I'm I've got the basis. I still got to spend shit. I don't even know. 25. It's a lot. Yeah. A lot, a lot of money. Lot of you money. probably got to so, spend about six, seven grand just to get the big stuff. Oh, shit. I don't. We're way over that, dude. Crank, pistons, rods. Yeah. ECU. Block, that's a three ECU. or four grand. Yeah. We're talking thousands. Grand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 15. I was thinking 25, as honest. I think. It's oh, yeah. Not counting paint and stuff because fancy paint jobs ain't no joke. Well, I just need. No, I got all the carbon fiber. I'm just going to get uh, it re cleared. I well, like the, new, the new new man on the carbon deal is like Gage's bike, you know, where they lay paint over the carbon, but leave the carbon yeah, showing. That's, maybe. He well, has, I hate to be, because, okay, not because he just out wired my motorcycle. No, Her dude, like Gage, sick. has a beautiful Pro Street bike now. Like, sick. Dude, it, like, to me, it's so different than everybody else's stuff. It's kind of like Jason Dunnigan's bike, you know, where it just, it's just different and it just blows your mind. Like, his well, bike is beautiful. Here's the thing, and like I can say this because I was in on it early, early. Like carbon yeah. fiber is badass; it still is, but it used to be badass when your bike was all carbon fiber. Now yeah. there's enough bikes and enough people with played a lot out of carbon fiber on their bikes that it's way cooler when you incorporate some type of wrap or paint with it. Yeah, that you see kind of that fiber, like, but it's not just all carbon fiber. You know that candy, like burn orange color that everybody went through in that one phase that everybody painted their stuff that color? That's kind of like, now if well, you have raw, raw, like just plain carbon, it's like, really? It's been so long since you've seen my bike. I mean, that's probably why. I mean, your like, bike's beautiful. You remember, it's got like it that candy red. red. Tint. Yeah, it's yeah. candy yeah. red tint and some stuff. But Oh, so I've got pictures of me sitting on it somewhere. <laughs> I don't know where those are. Probably one there. that day. <laughs> <laughs> so that's where i'm at on that bike uh the blower bike you know i it's just sitting there man I love nothing he ain't done a damn thing probably even checked the oil in it <sighs> no i haven't but i drained the fuel out i drained the meth out you better gas in it or it's gonna be methed up <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it ain't gonna be meth up man dude i pulled so much fuel out of that thing i was telling eric he's like how much i was like i don't know i just kept pulling fuel i pulled fuel like five different times when i was just trying to idle it to get you know to run some, run some pump fuel. gas through it yeah i think i put c16 or something oh, that'd be yeah. good for it that clingy fuel system that's yeah, good stuff. but dude it was like i feel like i got up to like maybe 50 percent of the fuel which probably is about right but dude it was still running like shit and you try and run a methanol bike on gas just, I mean, just yeah. to do what you're supposed to do, you know. That's the one reason why I haven't out. swapped my stuff over to methanol. It's just the maintenance side of it. I'm just not interested. Um, yeah, but the, the so what, here's what I've learned. And this is, a, this is a good little mini topic. I mean, we don't want to spend a bunch of time. But, yeah, so I switched uh, my blower bike. Well, Eric at uh, DAS Performance switched it over to methanol last year. DAS winter. Boost. DAS Boost. Um, yeah. And so we went to methanol for a couple of reasons. One it's it's super cheap it's really cheap um you're gonna let her chill too she's gonna be cool yeah it's super cheap it's it basically you run i'm starting to stutter uh you're running i don't know basically i'll call it i call it twice the fuel volume so you run a lot more fuel you push a lot more fuel into your engine so it runs a lot cooler um is another benefit 
and this is debatable, but you know, it's, it's less, well, this isn't really debatable. I was going to say it's more consistent. It's less susceptible to weather changes. Yeah. So maybe not more I, consistent than good race fuel, but a uh, race gas, but it's, it's less susceptible to weather swings. So like, and what I mean by that is like you start the day and it's, you know, 55 degrees and it goes up to like 80 in the mid, like the alcohol, uh, race vehicle, whether it's bike, car, whatever, should move less ET wise than something on gas. Now, in a 10, 8, 10 degree swing all day, it's, you know, if you like gas, it's fine. But sorry, I'm I just use nitrous or I just use, I just use nitrous or my brake pedal. It works. But no, Dustin, it, it really wasn't that bad. And for everybody listening, it wasn't that bad. Like Eric hooked me up. We, uh, he put a heater in the oil pan. And so what I do is every, every time cooks the moisture out of it, right? Yeah. Like, so I'll hook up uh, the bike before uh, I ever even try and start at the very beginning of the day in the morning. And I'll take the oil fill cap out and just, I mean, you're literally just heating the oil oil up and all, a lot of the moisture from the methanol that seeps into your oil, it just kind of burns off. And I'm not saying my oil was perfect, but it was better than if you didn't have a heater and did this. So then, I watch a lot of uh, Cletus McFarland on YouTube, oh, yeah, yeah. and uh, they do all their alcohols that cars that way. They have like they had a burnout car that they would uh, they call it cooking the oil. You know, they would heat it oh, up yeah, and get yeah. all the moisture out you of hear it. Here, so, like popping in, like yeah, that way oil. it's yeah, that way it's like a deep fryer. Of course, the fat guy knows that sound. You know, <laughs> deep fryer cracking. <laughs> Dude, you're gonna ruin my microphone one night. I know. <laughs> but anyway, you know they do that too to get the moisture out of the oil because that you know. I don't know if anybody knows, but if you run alcohol or methanol or whatever, uh, it will milk your oil up, makes it real milky. But if you yeah. do that, it, it gets rid of that issue. You no, know, it, it helps a lot. For sure. yeah. So, it's, I mean, that was it's a, a collaboratory a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that was helpful. I mean, you, you, it's a little bit, but it's not that bad. Um, so honestly, really all I did is, you know, I changed my oil, especially for oral. Me. You said, let me oral. I changed my oil. <laughs> He's going to be a hillbilly for us is over. <laughs> uh, uh, m- more than I normally would. And like I said, that's a stretch even for me. But aside from that, man, it really wasn't that bad. I mean, I didn't, that I didn't bike see was awesome. Like we had a few bugs that we when we figured that, you know, I'm the more, the most impressive thing to me to that bike was when we converted it or you converted it from a real street bike, which was stock clutch to a Gen 2. And we, I just kind of threw you a base tune up in it just to pray it worked. That, that motor. You bike, and Spencer on that slider. Because like, I mean, like you do more, way more Gen twos and sliders, but you and Spencer, yeah, we. You, I well, know you help Spencer too, but I'm saying like between the y'all, most of the most impressive part to me though was as you go out there, the bike has never had, it's always had Ben's hand for a clutch. Oh you know, Lord. it's never had, yeah. it's never had like a good, perfect, <laughs> a good, you know, a good rider on it. Curve. I'm, I'm it. not going to say that. I'm just like a good. I'm perfect not. Curve. But look, I'll tell anybody, and you've heard me say this. I will tell any of y'all listen i am a average Decent, good rider right not a great rider yeah great. average rider is what i would rate myself yeah in a great racer because there's yes. a difference that goes back to the, the school i mean like we're yep. gonna teach you to race not ride like don't get so, it twisted like don't come to us if you need to learn how to slide a clutch like i'm not saying dustin yeah. can't teach you and i don't have yeah we can hook you up with chris Moore for that if you want to ride a clutch yeah like, they're, like that's not us we're going to teach you how now to i can race. ride see that's the thing about me is, yeah, man you can ride people don't even realize how i know that's a but whole nother i enjoy it segment. more but to, to to you know all right guys this is a quick thing before i go back to ben's bike do you get up and turn the channel on your tv by the tv or do you use remote control use remote control if I don't have to get up and hit the button on the TV, I'm not gonna. So I don't have to use a hand. That's clutch. a whole nother subject, though. Yeah, but anyway, Dustin yeah. saying, Dustin saying this. We're just building our bikes and racing and classes that the rules let us. And make it easy. Nobody wants to go to the racetrack and work on their stuff. Like I want to go have a good time with my friends and yeah. race, you know. But we're, anyway, we're gonna back, get uh, we're gonna get on trigger alert and like. Yeah. So so <laughs> back to Ben's pro charge bike and that bike the most impressive thing to me was we threw a slider in it really had no clue what it was going to do we were actually going to go gen 2 and then we went to slider but anyway it makes the first pass like now saying that eric is a genius and the bike is just eric it has really it has perimeters it to cover your tail and it just went it went fast right off the trailer 
And then Eric said, hey, we need to do this. And you made a quick change on the clutch. I wasn't even around at the time. Come back and tell me what you've done. I said, yeah, that makes sense. Bam, it got faster. And then he started wicking it up. Uh, I think I feel like you and uh, not to sell Eric short because he's phenomenal and he helps me out tremendously. I remember maybe when you, did you have a Gen two in it at little point like at first at the end of at the end of well I'm saying last year so not this past year but the year before 2021 I tried it. yeah in 2020 in the so very that's end when I tried that's it. what I'm referring to Eric made a change in the dynamic springs that race and it oh helped maybe it. yeah but what I'm talking about is this year like slaughter was just a tune up that me and Spencer, you and Spencer tried. did yeah. that and y'all made. Yeah. Maybe a minor change as the first one. I'm gonna pull this out of the air, but I feel like uh, the first pass it was like 124, 122. It was people. retarded fast. Like and people don't then. realize. Like, what do you bracket race that thing? Like 770, 760s. Uh, I mean, dude is all over. Like, so I, the, here's the thing. He went 730s so that was, once. That was the right? first. That was the first pass. I like. I said it was low 120, 60 foot. And just, I mean, the thing was motoring right. So then, like, we made a couple a couple changes, or Dustin and Spencer did whatever. They told me what to do, and we changed the clutch of the hair. Not much at all. It was, like, 119. I just know. I think I was, like, second pass. I'm pretty sure it was, like, 119. And how 60. long is that motorcycle? 72, I think. I mean, it's, it's not, not that long. Like, it's not 80 yeah, inches. Yeah, it's not, you know what it's I mean? not a tractor trailer. Yeah, I mean, it's not long, and it's not super short. But, but it just, was working, We're man. talking, then, like, second pass. You oh, know? and then, like, what you're getting at is, like, I was struggling because I couldn't slow the thing down. I kept trying to yeah. slow it down. Effortlessly goes fast. not slow down. So that deep one, down in my first race was bad. Deep, deep down in my soul. I really, really, really want a pro charge bike just because what I've seen Ben's do. But it's then sick. also I don't want to leave what I'm so familiar with and what works. Like you don't want to, like, I also want a turbo bike. A trunchable was almost going to be a turbo bike, even though my wife was going to play on it. But I just don't really feel i'm so nitrous is simple guys you turn it on and it goes in there you know what i mean it's not like a big science to it yeah, i mean you gotta, gotta have a good tune-up you gotta refill bottles yeah you do but you also could break floor belts or i mean you ain't done that in forever because you had an issue anymore. right yeah but i'm just saying like there's more to it <laughs> okay you spend a whole lot of money at first and i spend a little bit all the time you know what i mean so that's and, that's really an upfront but deep down inside as i i really love that motor like i could I could take that thing, and I mean, let's just be real. In top sportsman, I never try to go the fastest I can go. I just put a nah, tune up in there to qualify. But I'm always top five. I'm like, I even post on Facebook, like you know, fat man in a skinny man's world, because I shouldn't. There, I, I will say this about standalones: they have made it very easy to control stuff and make things do what you want it to do without yeah. killing you. You know what I mean? No, I agree. I mean, we slowed my bike Your down. bike's a perfect example. Like, it well, went A as, to B off the trailer. And as know? Dustin mentioned, that first race, like, that, I really had it out this or last year with full slider and, like, all the changes that Eric did. I mean, he's spot on. Like, he is – he's genius for sure. I call that bike Bubbles. Uh, Yeah, Bubbles. And if y'all don't like trailer park boys, I don't know what you're missing in your life. I but, sent Ben uh, a like, sticker that I found on him I and he put it on the huge, bike. Dustin told me bubbles and like I was I I couldn't have been more ecstatic because I am a huge huge trailer park boys yeah. fan and if y'all if y'all know just, what I'm talking about it is a like and I'm talking about bad ignorant makes no sense it is just the dumbest show on Netflix like, it's almost like literally hey, dumbest yeah well we can't get it out of that but like how much if you know then you know but i'm a huge trailer park yeah. boys fan and, and, and that a guy, guy on the show is named bubbles and yeah because of my zoomies exhaust dust and like that sounds like bubbles yes yeah, blah, blah 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 blah. that's what it sounds yeah, like but it does it's you know like the, the one time that i raced you i've never i've only raced you once with that bike i think we might have made a time run together once but that one uh, time oh, i raced you last time and it wasn't a, i had to look down at my oh, tack and go is cursing. my stuff still running like i couldn't all i heard was Burr. i'm like is my motorcycle running like i'm doing a burnout just debating if everything's okay or not <laughs> so smoke and coming down yeah and then like when we staged i never heard it no more but the burnout like i think my bikes are kind of loud because they got the me sidewinders you know they're loud your bike's but, loud on the they're loud on the two-step yeah yeah and yours is loud like larry mcbride all the time mine's the time. loud a lot yeah for sure uh, I feel like the two step now that we got a two step on it and figured it out, like it's not, it's not it's that quiet. bad on it's the quieter two step. on the two step yeah. than it is, which without is weird it. because your bike's really loud on two step, I think. And my bike, well, I pull less. some timing out to smooth out the you know, that way it's not so erratic and it does make well, it like it's in a hole. 
did y'all hear what just what blah what Dustin just said? He pulls some timing out so it's not erratic, so it's smooth out the hole. Something these you'll are, learn on university. Sure, yes, these are tips that we're going to tell you because it it's all the small details. Yep. And Dustin will tell you that I fought for a while this year, and it's still not where I want it to be. But that's what he's talking about. It just because you have a two step on a bike doesn't mean it's consistent. My two step, for example, since we're on it, was ranging almost 500 RPMs, and that's not good. That means I would one pass I was launching at. 4100 and the next pass i was launching at 46 well hell that's going to change a lot my bracket bike moves 35 rpms on the two yeah step. see that's perfect and i've talked with some car guys it's also there. hard on the valve train well i mean it is but i mean in this game when we're playing for thousands of a second and you know uh, for you it doesn't matter because you're you're good about maintenance my so top for gas me, bike i pulled that much time in and it was pinging so i had to add some yeah. back so it moves up probably about 150 200 rpm bro. yeah but i mean like also like it you got to know that info and where you're yep. good at, you know, maintenance saws. It's just not a big deal, but you know, we're getting way off track. I mean, it's a collab guys. It's a collab. You got to yeah. have everything together. It's a joint effort no matter but, what, but we can go into detail on this, but it's going to be on the university. Yeah. So the blower bike, I mean, man, that thing was fast. Right. So Very long impressive. story short, seven thirties, like first weekend, like really out with this new configuration and like seven thirties was turned down. Right. So I went, I ended up, I th the best pass I made, and keep in mind, I'm trying to slow this thing up. It was, I did hit the scrambled egg buttons. I call it scrambled eggs. I've been making scrambled eggs. But uh, I, I scrambled it, so I added boost going down track in this particular instance. I went 731 at 197. Um, lost. But what out. he's saying, there's, without a doubt, that motorcycle is a 200 mile, 200 mile an hour motorcycle. And possibly, it could possibly run some like, Six nineties or seven O's, like it very nah, possible. I mean, like on, I, mean, I see two tents available. Honestly, I see it. Honestly, I think it'd run six eighties. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've not, we've not. You put it like this. What I was going is that, like, I ended up basically what it, what did I detune it to? Like seven sixties. I want to say like you might have dabbled in like 60s. the high fifties, low sixties. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was like seven like, sixties. I feel like was like that last big race at VMP where, you know, we yep. both had some success and then we end up racing each other in pro T final, but it was like seven sixties and, um, dude, that was on like 12 pounds of boost. Yeah. I'm out there. When I, raced, out. when I raced real street, it saw 34, 35 pounds of boost. Like I'm using a third of the boost to run seven sixties. Like I have no doubt that motorcycle would run. I mean, that's, I'll put that's it what way. will base worst really case will base in the clutch does. Yeah, but worst case scenario, that thing will run six nineties. I mean, it might be a six nine nine, but it'll run six nineties at two oh five. That's what I think. I think it's a, a solid seven oh six ninety bike pause. You know, it's gonna have to get mean to it. You know, you're gonna have to get that yeah, stuff in early, sure. but it's possible. Man, we got way sidetracked. Um well, we were talking about your motorcycles. Bike, we talked we about mine, we're talking we about your excited. Yours. We get excited. Yeah. Uh, that bike, I'm I'm not really doing anything to it. I don't really have a need to. I spent most of the year figuring out the little things with Dustin mentioned, little issues here and there. Nothing major. It was just, you know, kind of new bike. And it was kind of a new bike at that point because we did Eric did a lot. I didn't do anything. Eric did a lot of different stuff to that that you just cut the chain. You wouldn't notice. Yeah. That you wouldn't notice. So a little bit of new bike blues, nothing major. Um, I mean, hell, we we won top sportsman with it once, uh, run it up in pro et with it. So it did good. Who, who won in pro et? You did. You oh, that's I right. went red, yeah. There was I, no but we made it to the finals. We was happy. That was a good yeah. weekend. I know that was awesome. I won the gamblers race on Friday night. I made it down to the semi or quarters. And I sucked all weekend bash. except Sunday. Yeah. So <laughs> I made it to it was either I think it was quarterfinals. Michael Sweeney beat me. I think we were down he beat eight. everybody. He beat me, yeah. I think, that weekend. Yeah. Oh, Saturday, he beat me at eight. I've bikes. created a monster. What do you tell you? That ballot magnet that I got from Dustin has <laughs> yeah. changed the game. Yeah, he did. That, he's that all is, uh, super excited. I got to plug that. that real quick. That is one of the coolest parts of 2020. What was it 2019 when I first got to oh, get the no. test one? It was like, so smart. It makes sense. Yeah. And if you want more info on that, you can contact me. We'll talk about it. But but I, think I then then we got to Sunday and I got whatever lucky whatever I won top sportsman on the blower bike and then dropped into pro et which was like six or seven round and then you and I raced in the finals and it was just like that was like the best weekend it, that was top. the best weekend I'd had racing Dustin and like 
Dustin's race. Oh, I said in like, damn it, Tiffany. Yeah. <sighs> you do that a lot. Dustin's race. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> feel like nobody else is going to notice. So the only other thing you got to talk about is so blue, right? I well, mean, well, I was just going to say that uh, as far as uh, us race, I've, or we've raced together for so long. Sorry, I it's been a start, minute since we I raced. did start drinking yeah. some Knob Creek, so maybe I'm losing my train it's, of thought. It's been a minute, but you know, we've, since we've actually raced each well, other. Well, we've also raced for a long time, and like you've had some remarkably huge weekends. We'll get into that on another episode, but like that was a that may have been in this. I don't want this to sound bad, either, but that might may have been like the best weekend, like money wise. I, I want a lot of money. So let me let me ask the listener something real quick. So we're we really don't want to feel like we're bragging about ourselves, but we really don't like if I know, you guys. I, I just feel like it though sometimes. Like I feel like we're coming across wrong. So please yeah. Tell so us. what I want you guys to do is after you listen to this, comment. Let us know. You can message us directly or message the group, uh, the page. Let us know if you want to hear some of mine and Ben's most successful weekends. Like that way, you ask for it, and we don't feel like we're like we like really that. don't intend to brag on ourselves. But there is some really good stories that we're really just proud that we done. I like like that. really cool things that we're proud that we done. We can make that the next one. Well, like we stuff told, that we done that we're just stoked about. You know we, what I mean? We're telling everybody too. The the thing is, is the reason this is going so well is because Dustin and I can talk on the phone for an hour and not even realize. It. So like, yeah, we're just having a conversation. So we get excited and we, like I said, we've raced together for a decade Damn. now. Yeah. They're like we just go back and i'm like that's i just got excited i was like man that might have been the most financially rewarding weekend i've ever had it's close if it's not i was like dustin's had even like way better weekend so it's like we're just getting excited we're, we're not mean to but brag, if you but guys we, really want to so hear that history. and yeah. don't take it as a bragging like we're just happy and proud of what we've done if you want to hear that just let us know because obviously we get excited about things we've done and we can go on about it but we really don't want to do it and sound like we're being arrogant because we're really not intending to be. We're just, we have so much history and things that we know personally that we've done that we're proud of. Like I know things that Ben's done that he's proud of and he knows things I'm done that I'm proud of. Right. And if you want to hear, let us know because man, we can, we can knock out 90 minutes doing that. No problem. Like I got, I can think of five right now, you know, 100%. and uh, it would be easy for us and it would probably be entertaining because we can go into a little bit of detail that I, I have a bad memory, but I can remember some things and uh, it'd be a good little show, but yeah. you can let us know. Um, So the one last thing I'm going to say on the bike is, so this is the only main upgrade that I'm going to do on my blower bike. Cause we were talking about that and we, we kind of wildly got off tangent, I guess I'm going to, I'm, I'm putting this out on the podcast. I, I wanted to race that bike some against cars, and that's some of the reason I did the changes or had Eric do the changes to it. And Dustin knows really well about this. I struggled really bad the couple times. And I, I say couple, cause it's only a couple times I tried to delay box race last year with that bike. And I'll, I'll say this one is completely my fault because I didn't do it. You know, I didn't, I wasn't practicing. I wasn't putting in laps. I, I can't say for sure. I was bad. You just se. couldn't get comfortable on the bike. I was side. not comfortable on the letting go of a button on a bike. I've I've car raced. I car race sometimes, not a lot. And we won't go into that. But like I've I've car raced and I'm like, I'm very comfortable in a race car coming off the trans brake button, which is what we're discussing right now, per se, and the two set button. And I just couldn't get comfortable on the bike. So what I'm gonna do, and this is gonna sound foreign, but you know, we're we're telling it all. I'm actually knowing that I have a slider in my bike, right? I'm going to buy a clutch assembly, clutch lever assembly with a clutch switch and just tie the switch into the two-step and have a spring on the clutch lever. And that is how I am going to activate my two-step slash delay box while I'm racing by just throwing the lever. Because I was talking to Dustin and a couple of people. You've and done that for so many years. Like, who is it? Uh, Ligori. He remember I told you he was sending me some ideas because I posted something like I'm just struggling with this box on my bike. Yeah, and he he gave me a bunch of good ideas, and this is where this stemmed from. So shout out to David. I appreciate. Then you hit me up, but I took two and, and two I, and made one. Yeah, and I talked to Dustin about it. I said I know this is probably going to sound crazy, but I've thrown a clutch lever from like a Gen two a slide or a Gen two clutch or whatever, 
throwaway clutch. Thou, I mean, ten thousand times. And I was telling Dustin, I'm like, dude, if I'm if if I can throw a lever while holding an RPM with my other hand steady, and be within say uh, a hundredth, or well, no, not a hundredth, but yeah, yeah, a hundredth time after time after time. There's no reason I shouldn't just throw it on the lever. So, anyways, getting long drawn out. I told change. you what we could do to make one to do what we got to do. Yeah, you. Just, yep, exactly. So I'm. That's that's literally the only thing I'm gonna try. I'm just gonna. It's gonna be some trick, there, just one time try. deal that's gonna work for Ben. And once it, we probably we I'll be the only one. We get it out that. there and it works. We'll probably make another one for a spare because Darnell might break something one day. No, oh, and no, I'm I, I'm ordering two from the hit. From the yeah, hit. like we get the little. Well, you know, part of it will have to be custom, but we'll we'll make it work. But anyway, we're. That'll be like something that you'll have to just see. You yeah. can't describe it. But I know what's in my head how to do that. But, but basically what I'm saying is I'm going to throw a clutch lever that's a dummy lever. All it's going to do is release snap the out. two steps. Pow. Yep, yep, yep. So, all right, man, I don't know. Uh, I Talk don't about really... blue a little bit, and that's it. You're not doing shit to it. Oh, damn, I cussed. You ain't going to do nothing to that, are you? Blue, Dude, old blue. Uh, we don't need to talk about the 14s. There's a stepchild's anyways. Oh, that sounds bad. Yeah. <laughs> We have that. no hard feelings toward Kawasaki's except how difficult they are to change the spark plugs in. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and nothing against stepchildren either. So wow. um, dude, I don't really remember when we started this night because I feel like we were early, but maybe not. Just before eight o'clock. So we went almost two hours. We're pushing two hours, man. I I, I say it's about time to cut it because you and I can ramble for hours. Yeah. How about this? How about this? You already posed the question about uh, to the listeners, I was getting ready to say viewers are not viewing us. Listeners, do you want to hear other stories? I'll follow it up with this too. Continue to let us know what you want to hear. I've got some uh, ideas from that. I, a lot of times we can touch two or three subjects in an episode. Pretty yeah, easy. yeah, and I got ideas. Dust ha- has ideas. We have an idea list. Um, but we also we're supposed already, to talk about food, but we ain't done that yet. We'll do it another time. We already got um some from our listeners. Man, yeah. Damn, am I drinking too much? Uh, yeah, from no, some good. of our <laughs> listeners, I already got a couple ideas written down uh, here. We're gonna get into those for sure. We appreciate the feedback. We're gonna get to it. Um, we we just want to know what you want to hear. And let us know if we're coming across wrong, braggadocious, whatever. We, we don't. Wanna... We if you want to hear the stories, we'll give them to you. Yeah, but we also sure. don't want to sound like we're bragging. We just have so much history that we could just, I mean, we could go hog we wild. We lost. Us. We feel like we're on a cell phone conversation well, right now. Yeah. And, but I mean, that's kind of what you guys want to hear, right? You want to hear what we have to say about the sport and you're familiar with the sport. So when we talk about stuff like this, you can relate. So that's yep. kind of point, you know, part of the show. Um, eventually this stuff could be live sometimes who knows, but right yeah. now it is what it is. We're and figuring it out. As always, we do want you to make sure you, uh, like and share and subscribe and if you want to donate we appreciate it and uh, we'll have more info on sponsors and all that stuff at some point yeah 100 percent um yeah. and then the last thing i was going to say is interviews we're going to interview people but yes. let us know what type of interviews y'all want to hear do you want to i hear... still think we need boo brown up in here i just we got to get boo brown in here <sighs> man i don't even know if we can contain boo like we can get boo in here no, we can get him in here. I don't know if we can contain him. Be all um, right. <laughs> Boo is a very responsible adult. He knows when to get wild, when not. Yeah, no, you're right. He is. He ain't Darnell. Um, but just let us know what you do. You want to hear other racers on here, like Boo? Um, you know, D'Lo, Derek Milborn. He said he's he's in. Let us know when he can yeah. get on the podcast. That's our homie. We grown up with him. Uh, or grown up, I say grown up, but racing. Yeah, you know, I got a list of people. I mean, I we could even get very look, veteran. I'm gonna run through this real quick. I'm gonna. This is just interviews I briefly put down. I sent this to you. But I got Boo Brown, Ronnie Procopio, the beautiful Robin Procopio. I don't uh, know if Jimmy I could even Miller. talk. Yeah, you would just stutter. Uh, <laughs> I love Ronnie. No, Derek Milborn. Milborn. Uh, D. Jacks, Dwayne Jackson. Uh, I'd love to get James Farmer on here. James Farmer is awesome. Oh, he's a hell of a guy. Great family. That family, they sent us so many like baby, baby stuff, like yes. like racetrack fam. It's just yep. great. Uh man, if we can get I have one if person we can get Hagedorn on here. If we can get Roy yeah. on here, I got yeah. Mike Moore. I don't know what Bob I, Carlson's a damn legend. And you I got one him. right now that you you I can't even believe you ain't even thought about him. Well, I probably have. I'm just I'm going through the list. I ain't even done. Go ahead. 
The professor. Oh, the professor, man. The professor, <laughs> Ron Arnold. Yes. Man, we get Ron Arnold on a block. Man, all right, we got to end this. I'm apparently Ron is a living legend or, in my mind. He's retired, might come back, who knows? But Ron is a outstanding racer that I think would be very be very proper to have on the podcast. Hundred yeah, percent. We got lists, but what I was getting at, I'm getting long winded again. I know that's how we're doing. Let us know what types of interviews you want to hear because we kind of got like these in our, our in our mind and on our idea list. We have interviews with racers interview with industry people like do you want us to interview dave schnitz do you want us to interview um you know any and when race Eric, season gets Eric here from M- mtc like who do you want to hear from we're not guaranteeing that any of these people will do this but we will reach out and see if we can get you know somebody on do you want to hear promoters and series can we get jason miller on here i know we talked about our sunny jason. vic would definitely probably get on the show no sunny already messaged me he's in yeah <laughs> so yeah. so we'll put sunny on you want to hear about some sdba stuff and how he i mean i'd, I'd honestly like to talk with sunny because i don't really know the whole full story between was it him and brian started it but like yeah they started a series and look i'll put this out here i ran that series last year well, i didn't run the series i ran one race I had a blast. I had a blast. So it's a Good great time. little series. So yeah. you tell us what you want to hear. Do you, as far as interviews and as far as anything, but interviews, let's know racers, promoters, industry people. And if you want when, them all. We're going to work on them all. When race season gets here. I mean, honestly, we might have like this past weekend subjects. You know what I mean? Like whatever happened at XDA or whatever happened at STBA. We could talk I'm about that. I'm excited about race season. Race we're season. Race these are going to be gravy. Race recaps. Yes. Yes. These are going to be gravy in race season. Right now we're just trying to think of things and we want your help. We have ideas, but we would love to talk about what you want to hear yeah. versus us just kind of hoping that you want to hear what we're talking about. You know, like tonight, realistically being touched on a little bit of university win stuff, talked racing with y'all. We talked about bike upgrades and bike stuff. We can go into depth and more bike builds and how to build things or whatever, but um, we're just thankful that the ones of you that has given us feedback, and we would love more, all the feedback, all of it. Even right now, so far, I can't say there was any bad. Everybody was positive. I don't but know how there you, ain't been any bad, but if there's anything the that feedback. you don't like, like if, you, if you're tired of hearing Ben say like, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany done told me that was the only yeah. bad feedback but that. I mean I'm hoping my mic was fixed this episode I hope sounded we, good man I didn't hear you cut out once I think I, hope, I think the wifi the wifi yeah I, I hope that I we it. touched on subjects that everybody was interested in I hope you didn't get bored um, I tried to you know talk a little bit with Ben on his uh, race deal and try to you know make it interesting um, I think that's it man I think we've We're, covered all the bases we covered it we Thank y'all so much for, I mean, we're like, y'all don't understand. We're excited. Like I, yep. I told Dustin, like I've, I've not been this excited to do something in a long time. And that, that I don't want that to also sound like negative, like my life, yeah. sucks, cause it doesn't have a great life. I we're just life. busy, man. But we're, you know? uh, we're genuinely excited. Like we don't even, we went over two hours. We think we didn't even realize it. So we were supposed to start at eight and I was on this thing with Ben at seven 30, ready to rock and roll. You know, yeah, so. of course we were discussing, but thank yep. you to everybody so far. We look forward to continuing this journey because it's a journey for us. We're learning every day with y'all. And uh, just the last thing I want to say, and if if nothing else, uh, we want to thank everybody that's helping us so far. The so far as of this recording, we had twelve individuals already commit to the Patron level. Thank y'all for supporting Patreon. us patreon <laughs> um it i guess y'all had to create weird screen names or something i don't know that's why it's like i would shout each and every one individually out but it's like weird names i kind of know some of y'all just by the names but they're weird names like you had to create it i get it shout yeah. out to the patrons shout out to our current sponsors which would be dustin at hard times parts and service uh night marketing group mtc engineering penske shocks uh those two as of today and more to come more to come but i forgot one earlier dustin uh, i meant to add it in when we was talking about it that uh, can't forget ralphie at platinum general services yep. um yeah he's I did, working with did. us he's working uh, ralphie and uh platinum has committed to i can't even wait to tell y'all but he committed to a huge and i'm talking gotta about hold it gotta hold it you can't tell it an 
epic can't, giveaway. You can't tell it. For the school members, gotta hold it. Gotta hold school it. School members, I'm holding on tight. Huge, too, but it's expensive. I want it, and I can't even have it. <laughs> Dude, I want it. No shit. All right, so shout out to our current sponsors. We're Adam Daly because we're giving back and uh, giving away from our sponsors. Thank you, sponsors, to yep. the listeners. Uh, product certificates, products, um, as being a patron. So we're just keeping this thing flowing so we yep. think we're flowing so we appreciate you guys dustin you got anything else man that's it we'll it's see late. y'all later it's 10 o'clock we'll, hey, we'll talk it's we'll 10 talk o'clock. to y'all later talk to y'all later see you.